is 631, and I'd like to call the June 16, 2021 regular board meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board to order. Um, Cindy, will you please take the roll? Or, I'm sorry, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Jubilee? Here. Trustee Kanishak? Here. Trustee Schoenfeld? Here. Trustee Makula? Here. Trustee Rosansky? Here. Trustee Olson? Here. Trust Trustee Kian Adams? Here. Okay, thank you. Item three on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Could we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Item 4 is the approval of minutes. Do I have a motion for the approval of minutes? It needs to be a specific set of minutes. There are two sets here tonight. Okay, we can break them down. Approval of the minutes. May I have a motion for the approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of May 19, 2021? So moved. I second. Okay. have a, um, a motion and a second. We are now open for discussion. Um, are there any comments? Trustee Mokuma? No comments. Trustee Schoenfeld? No comments. Trustee Mnuchik? No comments. Trustee Rosansky? No. Trustee Olson? No. And Trustee Keen Adams? No. Um, I would like to, this is the 19th. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right. Um, so there aren't any comments. Um, Margaret, will you please take a roll? Trustee Jubilee? Yes. Trustee Hanushak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Rosansky? Yes. Trustee Olson? Yes. Trustee Keen Adams? Yes. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the special board meeting May 24th, 2021? So do I have a second? Second. The motion. Thank you. Um, Margaret, would you please take the roll? Okay. Trustee Dribblet? Yes. I do have a comment on these, actually. Okay, we're, I think we're trying to... You asked and get, she said she has a comment. So okay. before we vote, you should make people... Well, don't we have to have a motion to talk about it? We motion, yeah. that means we can talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we didn't. Okay, no, the ahead. motion means you can talk about it. Oh, you're right. Go ahead. Mine's sake. I'd just like to point out that it does state here that I made it very clear that I would not be here on the 14th in the notes, even though you said that you didn't know that. It's right here in the notes, so I want to point that out. I'm sorry, I will second I didn't it. understand that response of your comment. You don't understand the comment? No, I, I didn't hear you. Can you complete the sentence for six seconds? Yep, I am on page 11, and I wanted to point out that it says, Trustee Keen Adams said that she is not available on June 14th. So I was very clear that I would not be here then. Okay, and if you're you're at, you're mentioning that you're pointing that out to me, I will respond again as I did then. That the disruption in the meeting. But if everyone like, else heard it, then I don't know why you didn't. So because I'm over know. here, and if you want oh, to play games, on, it's Carolyn. not my. Come you on. know what? I don't have time for this. I Neither do we, Carolyn. You see, can be outbursts. Please don't hear us. It's outbursts like this. That yes, make it Carolyn. difficult to hear me speak here. But um, because it was forward. brought up at several meetings, and it just so conveniently happened where you didn't hear any of them. Excuse me, Trustee Rosansky, can we have some order? I would like to 
table the approval of the minutes for the special board meeting May 24th, 2021 uh, for further review due to the lengthy meeting and to assure accuracy. So I would like to... Um, so move. So move. I need a second. Second. I need audience. Margaret, could we take a roll, please? So, Carolyn, just to recap, you are motioning? Yes. And who is uh, second? Thank you. I'll take the roll. Trustee Jurlik? Yes. Trustee Hanushak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Yeah. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Ozanski? No. Trustee Olson? No. And Trustee Keen Adams? No. Item 5 on the agenda is public comment. So can we please call the first? We do. I just wanted to point out that we did have Mayor Oplitianis with us. I don't know if you wanted to move him to the top. That's, that's no, that's I'm fine. Okay. I appreciate it, but I, you don't need to do that. Okay. Then it is Kathy Toy. I'd like to make a statement, please. I'd like to move public comment to the end of this meeting. No, 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 no. That's very inconsiderate of our residents, well, our mayor, and everyone else. You think the mayor's going to wait till the end of our meeting at 11 o'clock? <laughs> oh, we, we won't be here till 11. We usually are, Carolyn. Let's be honest. We'll we'll see. Here. So, Susan, can we move the, the minutes to the end of the meeting? Um, I don't think you can exactly. You, you can. Some boards have a thing where you can approve the agenda before the meeting starts, but this board has never done that, and you didn't do it tonight. So, uh, but I'm not a parliamentarian. I really I can't speak to that. As a parliamentarian, a little bit of background on that much. You can make a motion to do that. And get a I think we don't need your advice, vote. Mr. Carabato. Thank you. Carolyn, we don't need your advice. Put this together. I need to speak now. I have to get home. I've got a grandchild with my husband. Okay, I totally understand. But if we can move the minutes to the end of the meeting, we no, the length not the night. Night. Someone can read your minutes. Read your public comments when you're at. I understand that, but I made the time. I etched it out. Puppy's babysitting. I think you should respect whoever's here. Let them speak. It's only 30 minutes. What is that going to really do to the Quite a bit, but that's why we wanted to move it. And I guess um, that's why we you want to move it. Fair. If that's the case, then it's not fair. It. It's, it, it's, just, it's not fair for the people here. I don't know how many you have talking. I have no idea. But um, five. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. That's fine. Thank you. I can talk. Yes, please do. All right, my name is Kathy Toy. And I feel public comments are falling on deaf ears, but I am going to continue to speak, hoping that someday, very soon. Carolyn, are you listening? Thank you. I'm multitasking. Sorry, don't mean to thank Very soon, the board will listen and take these comments seriously. I am very sorry to say that from my perspective, this board is being run by one person, Joe Mapula. In my opinion, Joe has no idea how the library runs and has no conscience as to how his cuts are affecting staff, patrons, students, and seniors. The president of the board, Carolyn, and two new board members, Olivia and Suzanne, seem to be following Joe blindly and shutting out the three experienced board members, Becky, Diane, and Patty. There seems to be much discord within the board, evidenced by Suzanne refusing to read Becky's written comments at the budget meeting on Monday. I don't believe that's how a board should be run. I came across another fiscally irresponsible motion, proposed motion by the board, motion 11.D, to hire a CPA firm at $150 to $300 per hour to do some of the work 
already being done by two very capable people. I know they are capable because I worked with Greg, who is a CPA, for three years. And Lisi was hired by the library because she had the experience, the position needed to replace the business office coordinator. I also know from looking at an IMRF salary report on the library's website that their hourly rates are much less than $150 per hour. The library will be spending more money to outsource the accounting work. Not a good decision, in my opinion, when the board is planning to reduce payroll expenses, cut outreach services, and professional development. Monday night at the budget meeting, Carolyn stated, we are not doing these budget cuts on a whim. Carolyn, it surely feels like it is when Joe seems to be making the budget decisions based on how many cars are in the parking lot. Carolyn, Joe, Olivia, and Suzanne, do you want to be remembered as the majority of the library board that destroyed the library from the inside out. Please think about that. Thank you. Jeanette Lee. Good evening. After attending and watching the last few weeks' worth of library board meetings, I am offended by the level of hypocrisy that is being displayed by the board president and the newly elected officers. This slate of trustees ran on the idea of fiscal responsibility, transparency, and doing what the community wants. What the community wants. It has been heartbreaking watching the scores of letters and public comments being read and falling on deaf ears. Seniors begging you not to cut off the book deliveries they receive. Parents begging you not to cut off the outreach program that their children enjoy at school. Staff explaining to you the benefit of professional development. Yet all of it, all of it, falling on deaf ears. Instead, Joe insisted he heard, like, he heard librarians say things that they clearly did not say and watching Carolyn shuffle her papers while the public speaks. The promise of listening to what the community wants when you are running for these seats is not being upheld. About transparency, you are scheduled to vote on a contract for CVSL services tonight. There has been much outcry about this contract, yet you have not budged on pushing this through. Even when it was discovered that there was indeed a second proposal, from a qualified company with an actual deliverable listed in the proposal. This proposal was never presented at a meeting, but was discovered via a FOIA request. This proposal was for $30 an hour, rather than the outrageous $100 an hour. Such hypocrisy, running on transparency and hiding this proposal. And fiscal responsibility. Fiscal responsibility is much more than just arbitrarily and heartlessly cutting dollars from a budget. Fiscal responsibility comes with weighing the results of these cuts, the benefit of the programs that are reflected behind the numbers, and the importance of the staff that are reflected in payroll dollars. At a recent meeting, one trustee said, we aren't talking about people, we are talking about numbers. What a short-sighted thing to say. When you are talking about making dramatic cuts in payroll, you are actually talking about people. Beyond the contract with Stephen Nassau, now you are pushing through a contract for a new law firm. One that will be charging $350 an hour instead of the $220 an hour the current firm charges. I don't know why you are insistent on switching law firms, but based on the contract with your friend Stephen Nassau, I can only guess at the correct reasoning behind this change. And now back to the school outreach I talked about before. Joe Makula has repeatedly said that schools should just bus students to the library instead of having librarians come to them. This is the most inefficient idea I have ever heard. Does Joe realize how much more time, effort, and money it would take 
to move dozens of students versus moving one or two librarians around town? Does Joe realize that schools are also taxing entities? If the school does decide to bus students to libraries, we the taxpayers will be spending more money on these programs than we do now. Moving the tax burden from the library to the school is just a shell game of moving expenses around and still hitting taxpayer wallets. We ran on wanting to cut bills, our tax bills, but what you're really doing is just cutting the library into shreds. It's heartless. One last point. I keep hearing you lament about how few library card holders there are in the community, yet you want to cut an event that would draw people to the library. You want to diminish the Chapter 1 newsletter that educates people on programs going on at the library. You want to cut hours so it is more difficult for people to get to the library at a convenient time. Shouldn't you be focusing on fixing a problem you have identified instead of exacerbating it? The hypocrisy of these cuts makes my head spin. Please, start listening to the community. Please, show some respect for the amazing staff that wants to keep this library as the beloved community asset that it is. Please consider the detrimental effect you are having on the library, the patrons, and the community by going forward with these budget cuts. Temperature. Hi, Jerks. Sorry. Hi, my name is Deborah Juris. I am actually a lifelong resident of Niles. I grew up in Niles, coming to the library, raised five children in Niles, coming to the library. At a time that I was really excited to look at Niles and kids on my block, not because I'm, I'm the old person on the block. So I'm looking at kids on the block and I'm thinking this is great because Niles is starting to regrow again from when I moved in and had the only kids. Part of the lure for Niles, in my opinion, is what Niles is doing, a strong library, a strong school district, strong everything. In my opinion, that's the way you grow a village, to make it good and vibrant and excellent. Um, I've been on, I gotta say, I've been on many nonprofit boards. I was an executive director, I've worked for the Chamber of Commerce, I've done a lot of things. Um, this board, I first agree with you guys. I mean, I first agree that, you know, people come to boards, they want the moon. But it's up to the board to say, hey, let's compromise. That's the one thing I'm not seeing about this board here. There's no compromise. Um, I know we're all adults. Um, I know there's two different sides to everything. But I'm not seeing any, any compromise in anything that you guys do. Which is really sad because then you're going, it's going to reflect on our library. You read the newspapers. Arlington Heights, displays all these other libraries, they're doing big things. They're growing their community. And we're taking back to 1950, which is a good thing in my opinion. Um, just wanted to let you guys know that you're not speaking for all the people here. You're not considering your community. You're not considering the kids in the community. You're not considering a lot of things when you're making knee-jerk reactions. And that seems to be what I think you guys have been doing. So, in that regard, please take a moment, learn to get along together, learn to compromise, learn to sit down with your employees and work these solutions out without just boom, boom, boom. This doesn't work and you're going to ruin your library that's been so good for so long. Thank you. David Carabato. Good evening, board. Good evening, Mayor. Thanks for letting me speak. Some very, how about some good news? Number one, the library is not going anywhere. Nobody's shredding anything. Nobody's destroying anything. You know what that is? It's not a feeling. That's a fact. Two nights ago, an amazing thing happened. I've been dealing, working with, trying to work with the community to bring our, our library to be much more efficient than its dollars. It's not to take away programs. It's a stop overcharging. And that's what's been happening with this library. I don't like being overcharged. I've used the example. A friend of mine says, I got a deal for you on a Chevy. It's a $30,000 car. He puts it in my driveway and I get a bill for 60 grand. That's not the way we go. 
Overcharging me is having 100 employees to operate this library. Overcharging me is a $7 million budget. That's what this is about. If it means that there's too many employees, that's overcharging me. And I'm, along with these other 59,000 that are claimed to be served by the library, are being overcharged. But there's good news, too. Two nights ago, I saw it for the first time in a long time. After public comment, it exploded. Here it exploded into a real budget meeting, a real back and forth, going over a budget that everyone took apart. You didn't just take the budget that was put together by the previous board and run with it. You actually had three budget meetings. You've been doing this all since, what, March 16th or March 19th? Amazing. I have never seen, and I've been involved in government for a long time, I've never seen a board work this hard. But you decided to pass your budget with real numbers that you understand. And there were mistakes that raised very big concerns for me. The Social Security number that was wrong, that was significantly wrong. There were a number of mistakes that I was hearing that a CPA firm coming in, it's answerable to the board, to handle a $7 million, $5 million budget, $13 million in savings, which is the people's money. That's our money. You have a fiduciary responsibility to have a CPA firm handle this properly, an outside firm that's answerable to you. But that meeting was absolutely fantastic, and I wanted to thank you for it. It was a lot of good back and forth. Um, The schools, there was an issue brought up here about whether or not the, the, the schools should become, when I went to school, we went to the library. That's how it was. If you wanted to go to the library, you'd go with your parent, you'd go with the school. If the schools want, and they go ahead and pressure, and the boards put in newspapers how they want the library to come to them, that's okay. Illinois' problem is twofold. The pensions and school board charges. The school board budgets are huge and completely outrageous. They have plenty of money to go ahead and pay our library for our services if we come to the school. I didn't see that offer to make the payment in that miracle. Um, we're going to cut staff, we're going to hurt the, we're going to cut staff, we're going to hurt the patrons, and we're going to hurt the seniors. There is no hurting of seniors, another lie. There's no hurting of the patrons, another lie. Cut staff, Boy, I hope you do. It's not that I, it's what I feel, it's what I think. God gave us two things that work side by side together, not to suffer. Your heart and your brain. You have compassion and you also have a fiduciary responsibility. Well, I wish I could read my handwriting. But anyway, I want to thank you for what you're doing. And when people say, hey, look, you're not listening to the community, I'm part of the community. You know, Pete, you aren't listening to the community. Look at the voting of the community. You know why you were voted in? Because this, the previous board refused to listen to the community. You know why you were voted in? Because the previous board shut Carolyn Durbuck out. Okay? There was no compromise. There was spend, spend, spend. And my prediction was, you're going to, to five and a half million, which it did. You went to seven million, which it did. And if by the time you're done in the next six years, we'd be operating this library at $10 million. I want to thank you for your work. And also for or the arrows, I recommend Liquid Bandage. It works really well. Take care. George Alpajanis. Good evening, everybody. And first of all, I apologize about the way I'm dressed. I would never walk into a boardroom like this, but I've been in the kitchen 12 hours a day for the last two weeks. I normally would have a sport phone, so please don't take it as any form of disrespect. The reason why I'm coming here is over the last couple of weeks, I've gotten over 150 emails, text messages, and phone calls. And, and I understood everyone, and there were both sides of it. And, and all I want to share with you guys is a few things. Okay. First of all, it starts with common respect up here. You guys were elected by the people. Okay. You saw what we went through across the street for the last couple of years. What led us to that point, I can't talk about. It's not that I couldn't, but I don't bash people. But 
there was, we worked so hard to try and get everyone together on the same page. And what was said to us on a multitude of occasions was just, it wasn't right. And after I took office and the phone calls started coming in from developers and from people that wanted to do business with the Village of Niles and everything else, I started hearing what I always thought was going on. There was disrespect in our boardroom, never by me. You never heard me swear at anybody. You never heard me talk down to anybody. You never heard me be unmindful of anyone that was in that boardroom, whether it was a member on the dais or somebody else. But it starts here up here at this dais. Everyone, are, people are gonna have different opinions and that's fine to me. That's what makes us who we are. We're entitled to our opinions. You don't have to agree with somebody's opinion, not at all. But we should always be mindful and respectful of everyone's opinions. Our village was stymied for two years, literally stymied. If you look at Golf Mill, that was, that was a promise from eight years ago, and nothing happened. The day after I was sworn into office, I got a phone call from the COO of the man that runs Golf Mill. They said, I want to come talk to you. And he invited me into everything that's going to be happening there. We have a board that's working together, and we don't all agree. We don't. But we're mindful and respectful of everybody up in that board. Right. And, and I'm telling you, you will get much further for our citizens, for the people that are in this room, the people that are not here today. My children and I have five kids too, like Debbie. I think we're both nuts. But, uh, <laughs> my five children have, still to this day, my oldest daughter is 26, year old, 26 years old, uses library constantly. I cannot tell you hundreds upon hundreds of times that I brought my kids here and left them here and it felt safe. A library is supposed to be a safe place. And I've always felt good about it. Outreach, I'm hearing all kinds of things about outreach. I'm in the service business, and you guys are in the service business. Uh, my, my six restaurants, the budget, the top is what we're doing here. And I'm not bragging whatsoever. I'm telling you, I understand that. Across the street, I was a chairman of finance, and I had a $110 million a year budget, which I delivered balanced every year, except for this past year with the COVID. Fortunately, the money that's coming from the federal government, which you guys should be getting a piece of too, by the way, is going to help all of us out. We've been very fortunate. We've never cut our services. I never cut my services at the restaurant. I've never cut the services at there because we're in that service business. Maybe you have to recreate how you're doing it or what you're doing and find out what services are working and aren't. You know, I heard seniors and I heard kids. You know, listen, my main focus you know, my administration is to be on the children, on the seniors, and on our veterans. And we can't do enough for our vets. The seniors are the ones that gave us what we have today. They're the ones that trail those for us. And the children, we need to nurture them and bring them up the right way and be kind and mindful. But it starts here. If people see what's going on, and I mean, you guys are arguing about public comment. Really? I mean, it's public comment. And no one should be should be the way it is right on the agenda according to Robert's rules if I had a right. I'm not a parliamentarian, but I've never seen that before. Maybe you guys should get a book of Robert's rules and really help you guys along. Maybe David, I think you would say as an attorney it would help me. Um, all I'm telling you is there's a lot of chatter, a lot of things that don't sound good right now that are coming to you. I may be the mayor, I have no jurisdiction over what happens in this room, but your library still says nine on it. And we're all one. I believe in building bridges and not walls. And you'll see that during the next four years of our administration. Joe and I spoke about doing joint ventures together. Maybe we talked about doing joint ventures with the schools and joint ventures. Maybe we're overlapping, but we could save some of the resources instead of us all doing the same thing because we all duplicate a lot of things or certain things. And maybe we work together. And that's where the bridges are being built. They really are, you know. But I'm asking you guys, please, you know, I didn't like what happened in Niles for two years. I, I, I was Sorry, not. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, to interrupt this time. It is. Well, where's my timer? I mean, I've never, never been able to talk so long. Well, give me a bigger timer than I said. I apologize. But all I'm asking you, please, for the village, for its citizens, let's work together here and do some good for the village. All right? Thank you. Is it for the in-person comments? There are a few written comments. I don't know how much time we have left. Ten minutes? Ten minutes. All right. I have 
Kathy Garrity Rodinos. As an advocate for young adults and seniors with special needs, I feel the intentional eradication of library services must be addressed. Here are comments and concerns of some of the Niles residents negatively impacted by the approaching service cuts. Three and a half years ago, I attended a lynda.com workshop at the Niles Main Library. As a result of that training, I was promoted. Then COVID hit. I would have been laid off and put on unemployment, but the wonderful reference librarians assisted me by explaining a new computer program available. I have been allowed to work at home. I depend on the library for so many services, audiobooks, ebooks, large print books, and when I am able to visit the library for new programs, I could sit at home on disability, and when I'm able, I will visit the library for new programs. I could sit at home on disability, but with the patient assistant from your library staff, I am a financial contributor and taxpayer in Niles. I do not take up a space in the parking lot, but I do depend on the resources available from your library every day. I feel your budget cuts are aimed at programs specifically utilized by members of the community with special needs. Please reconsider annihilating programs. That is from someone named, with the initials JM. I believe these are all special needs people. Yeah. Hello, I use the library to get audio books to assist me when reading braille books. Sometimes when I am reading a big book, I supplement with an audiobook. It helps me when my fingers get tired. I want to get back to the library, but my health is very important to me. I have also used audiobooks in Polish. I am trying to learn a new language so I can volunteer to help other people who are blind and only speak Polish. They want to learn English so badly and maybe I can help. But I listened to a meeting where they were talking about getting rid of too many programs. I need the library. That is from SBA. Dear Board of Trustees, the Niles Main Library has been my lifeline. The people who work at the library have helped me on my long road of recovery from a horrific stroke I suffered as a result from a bad car accident. I had to learn to read all over again. The librarians suggested children's books in English and Polish. After my stroke, I couldn't recognize the English alphabet. The librarians realized I was speaking Polish. Every day I am learning new skills. I have a job, I have a condo, I pay taxes, and I vote. Keep your paws off the programs. I pray none of you ever suffer a stroke, and I pray you come to your senses. GP. I am deeply saddened that once again, as a person with a disability, I am being rendered invisible. With each stroke of your pens, you are eliminating necessary and vital services for all residents of the Niles Main Library District. However, it seems you are targeting those of us with disabilities. I implore you to meet with as many residents of the district to see what their needs are. I find it very perplexing that you feel the need to cut special services, eliminate the business manager position, but you hired a crony of yours at a mere $100 an hour. At the very least, you should be hiring a non-biased professional, not an accomplice to the crime. Perhaps I could work on your campaigns and make $100 an hour. And that one I do not have initials on. How much time is left? Sorry, my Fitbit died. Um, and that's okay, my phone's dead and I'm trying to read my, um, five minutes. Okay, this is from uh, Barb Golick at Early Learning Center, uh, which is the First Steps Preschool at District 63, and she is the principal. Dear Niles Main District Library Board of Directors, free and fair access to books, to reading, is a right and one we should fight for. That is a quote from someone named Kate Moss, M-O-S-S-E. As the principal at the Early Learning Center at District 63, I wanted to share the importance of the partnership that the First Steps Preschool Program has had with the Youth Outreach Program at the Niles Main District Library. Through this strong partnership, we have been able to provide our preschool students and families with opportunities to high quality literary experiences and literature. Our Free Preschool for All program serves many low income and multilingual students. We have worked with April Lee, Children's Librarian, uh, to provide countless story times, both virtually and in person, and parent events to encourage use of the resources available at the library. We yearly have a parent participation event with the library to encourage families to sign up for library cards. April also works with us to incorporate different cultures into books through the school book borrowing programs. With over 70 languages spoken in our district, April has done a wonderful job incorporating mirrors and windows into the literature for our children. In addition, our units of study are enhanced by the literature that is borrowed from the Niles Main District Library. 
It would be extremely detrimental to our community if this partnership dissolved due to changes being recommended of the outreach program. I strongly encourage the board to consider the benefits of continuing this program for our youngest learners and their families. And we have uh, from Giselle Labreck. First, I want to say that I absolutely love the library and the staff. The Niles Main District Library truly has the best staff and director. I have had a library card since I was a year old. The library is like my second home. All of the programs the library offers are amazing and benefit our community. This library has won several awards, which is why I don't understand the reasoning for the changes that the new board wants to make. If anything, their agenda is hurting and not helping this wonderful library, its patrons, staff, and community. Taxpayers is a common thing that keeps getting brought up. The amount taxpayers pay toward the library is minimal. For someone who is worried about taxpayer dollars didn't seem to care when he sued the library and cost the library and its taxpayers thousands and thousands of dollars. Also, putting a freeze on hiring right after hiring someone and that person worked on their campaign and is getting paid $100 an hour is truly stunning and is outright wrong. But for some reason, sending, sending staff to conferences is a problem. There is no logic to this and seems like they are doing what is benefiting them and their friend. There needs to be a thorough background check. It appears that four trustees are doing what they want and not doing what is best for this library's patrons, staff, and community. We are just fully reopening as a state. Of course the numbers will be lower because of COVID, but now that everything is opening up and fully reopening, you will see an increase in patrons and the community at the library. Lastly, I would like to say that the concerns people have are valid and are because of things being crossed out by certain board members and what the new board has been saying. Claiming that it is not known where the comments are coming from and that they are false claims is not true. Please hear what the community is saying and not let it go in one ear and out the other. Please hear what we are saying because we truly love our library and staff. Thank you for our time. I expect that is time. Yes. Okay. Thank Can we get copies of the ones that were not able Certainly. to be read? And I also have something I wanted to make sure all the board members had. It was mentioned um, on Monday at Monday's meeting that there was an open letter to the board from a lot of state legislators. And I just wanted to make sure everyone had a copy of it. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have no more. Yeah. One more? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. The next thing on our report is uh, number six, trustee reports. Um, oh, I'll start off as president. Um, I would like to extend my appreciation to our Board of Trustees for all of their hard work um, in understanding the budget numbers and listening to each other for input as we created the 21-22 budget. Um, I realized it was a very taxing process. For the first time we've had three workshops and then a budget review process. And um, not only did we have much documentation, but we received a great deal of information and thanks to everyone's efforts, we were able to create the 21-22 Budget Appropriations Ordinance. And um, I just want to say I hope we can continue to work together so we can see how beneficial changes can be and how there's more than one option on the table for us to make our, li our library better. So thank you. And the next... Um, one is trustees. Do any of the trustees um, want to speak? Joe McCool, do you have to say? Um, I was going to do the treasurer's report. Okay, so that'll be afterwards. I just, all the trustees get a chance. We'll do some more. Okay, well, well, okay, go ahead. This is the 11th month of the year. We are 92% through the fiscal year. Revenue is at 96% of the budget. Salaries are at 97%, approximately 5% higher than they should be at this point in the year. This is due primarily to several manual processes that were introduced during the pandemic, which were necessary but inefficient. 
at this point, we are returning to more efficient practices. Materials. Materials are at 91%, just slightly below their, where they should be. Operating expenses are at 50%, 57% of the budget and will continue to be below budget amounts due to unexpected distributions from CCS, lower internet charges, lower printing costs, and lower programming costs for youth services. General and administrative costs are 77% of the budget. This is due to lower than expected costs for professional development, copiers, consultants, and other expenses offset partially by higher legal costs. Employee fringe benefits are at 97% of the budget, which is about 5% higher than where the fee should be at this point in the year. This is due to higher health insurance costs as, if, as employee members lose their jobs and start buying health insurance from the library. We are also seeing a little higher retirement cost, which is related to the experience with salaries. These items are offset by good experiences this year with health and dental reimbursement plans. Utilities expenses are at 78% of the budget, um, of the budget amount, reflecting the partial closure and reduced hours of the library during part of the last year. Capital expenditures are at 7% of the budget, reflecting the small process on a project which is now canceled, as well as some other projects. Building and maintenance is at 57% of the budget due to underutilization of repairs and improvement account. COVID cleaning, equipment maintenance, and other accounts partially offset by higher than budgeted non-contractual maintenance. Overall, the total expenditures are 72% of the budget, which is far below the target of 92%. Trustee Rosansky? No. Trustee Olsen? About the budget or about the trustee comments? His, his trustee comments. Um, I just want, on a lighter note, I tuned into the chair yoga a few times already because there was discussion about cutting that. Um, I found that it was well attended and some of whom uh, the listeners were hot home about and they expressed great gratitude to the library for offering this class. Um, and they really would like more classes. I'm also grateful to the downloadable offerings at the digital department managers, along with adult services and any other department that's not sure. There's a, um, a wide selection, and this is way different than it was a few years ago. There's much more availability, and thanks for the excellent work. Thank you. Trustee Kunam? Yep. So I understand that my comments that I spent quite a bit of time preparing for Monday's meeting were not allowed to be read. Um, so I will make a few of those now because they were very directly related to the budget. Although some of it was just comment, some of it I want to make sure is brought up. So I wanted to make sure it had been addressed that the minimum wage is going to be increased and we need to allow for that. I don't know if you guys, I wasn't able to watch the entire meeting since I've gotten back, but I don't know if you talked about that. But that's something that's coming up that we need to plan for. Um, I wanted to make sure we had a really good look at the legal fees that are coming up. I know that three of us have asked for the lawyer to be present at our meetings, but unless we have four people that want the lawyer here, then it, it won't happen. So we've been ignored for that request. We think I think that having the lawyer at our meetings for a while until the four of us who are new have our footing is a really good idea to make things make sure things don't go on the side of the line that we're walking very closely to. Um, we need to allow money for the labor attorney because we're going to be dealing with the union. There is a line item called trustee expense, and I had some ideas for that. Um, at first, I'm just going to read verbatim this paragraph I have. It's not uh, first based on our meetings together so far. I think we'd agree that things are not running smoothly. 
We are not listening to each other, respecting each other, or sharing ideas in an open professional way. I cannot even get four out of six trustees to respond to my emails. We need to work together as a group of seven. To that end, I suggest some sort of professional coaching. We can reach out to Rails for ideas. We should allow at least $500 for this. My second idea for the trustee expense line is to have a professional parliamentarian help us. It was clear at our first meeting that we needed help when public comment was requested on how to make motions. Again, four out of seven trustees are new, and we could use some guidance. We can reach out to the American Association of Parliamentarians to find a local resource. They can attend our meetings and coach us to be better trustees by learning how to use Robert's rules to suit our library and our meetings. Under vehicle operations, I wanted to see if we needed to consider budgeting for a new snowplow because uh, Greg and Dave had mentioned that the one we have is on its last legs, and that could be a big expense. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to highlight from there, but I kind of feel like, you know, I kind of feel like I'm being censored. And I, I would like to echo Mayor Epijanis and ask again, because it's not the first time that I'm asking, that we work together. And it's really hard to do that when someone won't even look at you when they're talking to you. President Durbin. Can you even repeat what I just said? I heard every word. Can you move on, though? I, I don't How do you feel about that? Do you agree? Can we do that? Can we do what? I, I, I heard your recommendations, and we can certainly... I asked if we could work time. together and not censor me anymore. Nobody's censoring you. And yes, we can work together, but it helps if everyone lets everybody speak instead of scream and yell. There's been a lot of that. So okay, but right now, now that I'm you're not interested in working together, on. I think it's a good first step. Can we move on, though? I don't want to get into an argument. There always seems to be all this backlash. So yes, I think it's a great idea. Are there any more comments from the trustees? Okay, thank you all. Um, next item on the agenda, number seven, is payment of bills. Do I have a motion to approve the operating expenses of $277,696.96 and payroll expenses of $282,582.55 for a total monthly expense of $560,279.51? I have a question. Oh, on the uh, total. So, excuse me, excuse me. I need a motion. So, second? Yes, sir. Jack, okay. Okay. Trustee McCooley, yes, your first on the comment. Let's go right yes. ahead. Uh, this um, statement here that was interest, uh, consolidated statement was provided here for, uh, it shows the total expenditures of 485 222. Yet it shows on the agenda that it's 560 279. Can you explain the difference, Greg? Yeah, so um, uh, especially especially this month, we had uh, some expenses that were put into a balance sheet account called uh, prepaid expenses. Uh, a good example of that are the uh, checks that were cut for insurance, which begins on July 1st. So they weren't in the P&L, and they won't be in the P&L until next year. If you look at the P&L that, that's in front of you, you see that we already have insurance costs. Those were paid last June, maybe last May, and the same process was used to assign it to the correct year. So there are a few things like that. Okay. Okay, Trustee Schellenfeld. Thank you, Mayor. Director's report. 
So I, my, most of my report is written, um, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you have from the written report. I did want to report on the newest thing that has happened, as I put in my director's report last month, uh, when the state moved to phase five. I have a question. I think she asked to table the report. To table the report. Yes. So when? You can't and table one month's report. Well, maybe we can put it on the um, website so everyone can What's the see? reason for that? So we can move along. This is an important part of our monthly meeting. And this it is actually the, the agenda. It's actually the highlights of our department, which I've said numerous times, our public would benefit immensely from that instead of just seven of us getting these colorful pages and they're discarded after the meeting. How is it working together to not allow the director to share what's happening in the library? It's on the agenda. How can you just well, you could my, table anything my, the question, my question is Carolyn, please. Um, Susan was kind enough to say she won't read her report, which she hasn't read a report in a long time. She said if there are any questions, how long would it take for the board members to ask any questions they might have on what they should have already read? So are we asking Trustee Olivia, I mean Trustee Nushik, not to. I'd like to ask yeah. Olivia what is the reason that you'd like to table this? Because this is a lengthy agenda. Well, and it's like Trustee Durbin said, an update on what the departments are doing that's available to us and we all read it. So it can't be posted to let everyone know what the library is. I, I do have new information. I was just getting ready to say what the update is from the written report. I would like a chance to do that. All right, so uh, as I said in my previous month's director's report, when the state of Illinois moved to phase five, the plan was for when uh, the restrictions on capacity and time spent in places was, were lifted, um, I had said all along that we would be restoring our previous hours with the exception of closing on Sundays. Um, I am aware that two of the trustees had wanted to keep the hours at 54, which is our pandemic, Timing at the 54 was only a, only when the library staff was divided into teams. We didn't have enough staff to staff 70 hours. Um, but what I am doing with that, I knew that you might very well turn it back to 54. But the other thing that I heard from Trustee McCoola is that he wanted me to make a decision on what the hours should be based on usage. So I need them to be using the library so I have some data to work with. So I pull the door count on an hourly basis every day so that I can see when are the most popular times here in the library. And I also am noting that uh, we are getting quite a bit busier from our May numbers, our, our June numbers are quite a bit higher than they were. So that is the purpose of having restored the hours for now. Um, and then it's going to be up to the board to vote what they want the hours to be in the future, but I can't make changes on the basis of one trustee's opinion. That is not how a governing body works. So that is the reason why we are currently 9 to 9, four days a week, and but we're still holding off on the Sunday hours. I'm actually getting a lot of pushback on the Sunday hours uh, where people really want Sunday hours. So I may very well have to shift one, close one day and be open on Sunday. So I just wanted to explain that that is what is going on. So my question to you then is, um, I think you said um, you, 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 you would be restoring the hours the 66, is that your terminology? And I'm trying to understand, after three days of workshops and a budget meeting and constant discussion about we're at 54 and that the uh, attendance did not show at this time to have an increase in hours and that we would maintain 54, how did that 66 even come about and it was never brought up in all the days we met and talked about that and it was a very heated discussion. So I'm trying to just figure out where that number came from and why the, all the board members who talked about the budget all these days didn't even know about it. Anymore. Well, I mean, it, it wasn't my director's report. It. It's, I've been saying it for months. It's always been the plan. Every time I've done a timeline, that has always been the plan. Well, we've never heard 66 hours. We've heard you were staying at 54 and there are all kinds of comments about why you were justifying 54. So what I'm trying to say is 
now I've heard they went up to 66 and it was posted on the website. That was not a conversation. And, and you know, you may put something in a report, but after you meet for four days to talk about what's going on and, and what the, the numbers, what was reflected in attendance, all of a sudden to increase to 66 without any conversation with the, with the board, I mean, that, that's, I, I find it, I, I'm amazed that that number even popped up. So I don't, I don't well, I mean, we were at 70 before the pandemic. I mean, I, I, I know we said we were going to restore our hours. I know, but we can't restore hours until we can restore the patrons. And the so patrons have been coming back. That's sure what I just said. Back. I'm sure they're coming back. But the point is, until we can justify the numbers to increase them, then you increase them. I mean, there isn't a massive, I mean, this library is not jam-packed. And I'm sure there are more people coming, but I'm trying to understand where the idea to even increase the 66 came when all the information we talked about explained how at 54, we're still in that boat. We haven't really, we haven't prospered yet. And we might, but well, not. But I, I am telling you, I am watching the numbers, and I'm they sure are going up, and the library physically is very clearly much busier. Okay. We had 573 people yesterday. We had 633 people on Monday. People are coming to the library. You can't so how does that counter work that there's 500 people in the library? They're not at once. It's over the 12-hour period. And I can see which times of day are the most popular times of day so that I'll know whether to be open in the morning or whether to be open in the evenings. But I, I do need data to be able to make the decision that Joe said I was going to have to make. I was trying to make the that. decision before you got the data yesterday. So again, I'm trying to understand why the numbers went up and now we have data from yesterday. I, I can check this every day. I know what our numbers are doing, okay. and plus I have my window looks out on the parking lot. Okay. I see the people I know. coming. That's in wonderful. Going. And so the, my question is: I guess there was no need to have a discussion with the board about. Well, it. I, I do apologize if the, you felt that I should have gotten your approval on that. I do apologize for well, that. That is not what the previous board wanted. After spending four days discussing that specific item in three workshops and a budget, and it was repeatedly. Um, explained or it was documented. I mean, it was really clear no. what this board's direction was. But no. yet, what your no, board direction was. About. We so had yet, mentioned it should no. be 70 hours, but again, you ignore us. Plus, how is she going to be I able to finish to go ahead and talk? Speak. But I would have my hand out here for like five minutes. I'm I would sorry. appreciate I'm a sorry. time to talk. Thank you. And trustee, I'm sorry. Um, Director Lemke, I would like to see the stats that you have. I'd be very happy to pass those to you. I'd like to understand um, the numbers and sure. just what they represent. I'll put together a report and send it out to you all tomorrow. Well, Thank you. I don't necessarily need a report. I'll just take what you have. You don't have to. This, uh, this is just a sample. I'd like to give you the full data so you can see for yourself the increase from May to June. So, and the data would consist of how many times people walk through the front door? Oh. Is that what you mean? Correct. That's what you're using? Yeah, at different times of day. Right. Okay, so when they walk out, what happens? That's a different number. I just, uh, there's, you get two numbers. So you know if they're coming or going? Correct. Okay, perfect. All right, well, yeah, that would be helpful, but again, the numbers came after the increase, so that's, that's that was that always my plan. Pardon me? That was always my plan. It was always my stated plan. It has been the plan on the timetable for reopening all along, and as I said, you haven't voted on anything yet. I'm Thank just hearing you. from individual trustees, that's what they want, but you all work as a body, and the body has not made any decisions yet. That's right. Well, apparently, their body so is that why is that why the vote was omitted from the last board meeting? I'm sorry? What is vote? The there vote was no the vote. The was not on the, on the last month's board sorry, meeting agenda. What was, what was omitted? Last month, when we, or last week, uh, was it the last meeting, the budget meeting, we um, never um, took a vote on the tentative budget. No, because that's what you do tonight. You, but there's usually a vote on. Well, you we did a straw vote, remember? You, you made a lot of changes at that meeting. There was no tentative ordinance. The day Greg has been working on a tentative ordinance for 24 hours to get it ready for you. Well, all. He, like I said, these two communicated, and Greg didn't need it at that time. At the night of the meeting, there was no tentative ordinance, and one person's figures do, does not determine the tentative ordinance. Again, yes, Joe yes, is yes, one yes. person. Yes, yes, and what is the position of the treasurer the regarding this process? You were the treasurer, and you never did that. 
Oh, I, he was more thorough than I ever was. That's yes. true. Well, but my point is, as treasurer, that's his position. So it's not like it, it uh, historically look. has not been the treasurer's position. It, Joe is taking things in a different direction, and that's fine. But yeah, I, I mean, you didn't say you wanted the tentative ordinance on the agenda. I had the agenda, and I, you asked me to put what was on the previous year, and it wasn't on the previous year. I did exactly what you said to do. Exactly. Okay, so now that we're at this point, the hours went up to 66, and our budget is based on 54. So what's the purpose of that? The budget hasn't been passed yet. Right. I mean, we're still in the previous fiscal year, and that was budgeted for. And uh, the, you know, I need to, like I said, I need data to determine which days are we should be open. If we're cutting hours, from the pre-pandemic time, I need to know, as Joe said, I need to determine what the popular hours are. We want to I respond agree. to community need. So this is giving me the data. Okay. And I will give you the data if you want input on that decision. Okay, so those are the, what you have in front of you are the actual figures from the, um, the time, whatever that's called, but the door counter. Correct. Okay. I disagree with the way this whole thing was handled, but, um, I guess that's how you handled it. I don't disagree. All right, so where are we? Um, when Joe asked her for figures on when the library is used the most, how in the heck is she going to get the figures if the library isn't open? Excuse me, Trisha, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I understand her completely. I don't know why you don't. Because you know what? Does anybody else have a problem understanding me? I thought I was speaking the same language as everybody else. No, I said, said excuse me, I'm not you talking to you. You asked the question. My answer is, Joe said it's 54 hours. You decide what date. But it's 54 hours. They yes, have yes, the yes but and the, they and we have a director that went up to 66. This is so still as, the I'm, I'm answering your question. Okay. I'm answering your question. And Mr. Caraboda. I'm answering your question. And I'm telling you, public comments are over. Thank you. So, Joe. And I'm sorry, I raised my voice a little bit. I'm trying to calm it down again. You and Carolyn have stated multiple times you wanted 54 hours for next year. We never and, and that's your opinion. However, you've also asked for data to show you what 54 hours it should be open. That is exactly what Susan is doing. This is still the last year's budget. The money is there. So if you want this data, let her collect the data. Thank you. Did you understand me that time, Carolyn? I guess my point is, I wasn't, I wasn't defying the data. My question was completely different than that. So it's fine. I'm glad you got to make your point. So we are now, uh, are there any more comments on now that we're on this subject? Or can I move along? All right, the next item is number nine. Communications. Um, Susan, did you need to read anything? Or no, no, there, uh, there are a couple of things in the packet. Um, and I should go back to the statistics, which are part of the director's report, and you'll notice that um, Cindy prepared a lengthy uh, listing of our programs, which Thank you, you have been asking for more data on that. So we're trying to give you guys what you are looking for. Thank you. Is the FOIA request, are they, is that part of the director's report or is that it is, communications? It's the director's report. Okay, I do have a question. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Is, is it okay to go ahead and ask now? I'm sorry. We're on communications and you want to talk about the FOIA report that was part of her director's report? That's fine. Okay. Um, I, I was noticing in here that there were some FOIA requests. Um, let's see. From the Northwest Side Coalition. Um, one was for things with Sheriff Foss Eggman, and then the other ones were for proposals received between May 1st and the date of the request. And it says that, I just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly, that all trustees were asked for these communications. Susan, is that right? 
uh, the library pulls the ones from the library account, and then it uh, then any then the request is that any trustees that use private accounts to conduct library business turn in anything that they have. There all seven of us were asked for these things. Correct. And four of us did not respond. Correct. To both of them. Correct. And it was the same four trustees that did not respond. Correct. I am not sure why that would uh, possibly be. What are the consequences of that? Why would you not respond to a FOIA request? I, I don't know who the four were. I know that I was not one of them. Is this a conversation for the board meeting? People question. Maybe you can ask someone personally after the meeting. She doesn't get response back when she does email board members. Well, maybe you should try, you know, talking to them when you see them. I, I don't, see I don't them. think this is. When a, do we see you? It's at a board meeting. Okay, we need to move on. I, I'm not sure what the. That's not very transparent, and that is not working together. If you have a question, please take the time, not in the middle of a board meeting, to approach whoever it is you'd like to speak with. After this meeting, great. I would like to time. see all of you after the meeting, then one by one, because that's the only time we're together. Well, definitely approach us when the meeting ends. That would be a great okay. idea. Okay, so now moving on, there was community. We are now 10 unfinished business. Okay. Do I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2101, setting the schedule of meetings of the Board of Trustees of the Illinois Main District Library for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2021, and ending June 20, 2022? So moved. So moved. Any second? This sheet of paper says June 15th, 2022. Does it? The ordinance. Uh, 
uh, so that, that we can make the best and highest use of this time. So you would like to move that can, item to where? Uh, to, to what we're going to do next. So what number is the um, insurance? I think it's, yes. yes, it's letter F. Okay, cool. Okay, so F will go to A. Is that what we're saying? Yes, please. And then A will go to F. Well, I mean, you can just you can just push everything down one instead of moving it down six spots. I think it'll make it a little less confusing to just move it down a slot. Well, let's take care. Of, I think there's going to be more. Let's take care of this um, person right now. This paper present presenter. Okay, uh, I'd like Jack Cook to uh, introduce himself and then talk about the uh, process that we use to uh, secure the best prices for insurance for the uh, for the next year. Thank you. Um, as Greg said, my name is Jack Cook. I am the president at Cook and Cobra Insurance Group. We're located in Park Ridge. I've been an insurance broker here since 2012. And um, uh, we have a specialty working with libraries. Today we represent 37 libraries in the Chicago area. Um, each year we take the uh, insurance to our companies. Um, to see who would be interested in writing insurance at the best price, providing the best coverages. And uh, since 2012, we have been mainly insured with a company called Utica National. Utica National has a special program for libraries. They probably insure anywhere between 800 and 1,000 libraries in the United States. Um, in Illinois, they're probably one of the biggest writers of libraries. In addition to Utica National, uh, we also write, uh, represent a couple other national companies such as Hanover, Chubb, uh, Travelers, and Hartford, okay, all national companies. In addition to that, we represent regional companies. Utica National is a regional company, West Bend Mutual is a regional company. The difference between the two is a national company uh, it is writes insurance in all states. Regional companies pick and choose where they want to write. So you can imagine that companies like Utica National, West Bend, are not choosing to write in California with forest fires and Florida with the uh, hurricanes and things like that. So. Together, we combine all the insurance with the markets that we have contracts with, and that is how we place the insurance. Um, in, a, in a competitive way, what we see out there are basically three insurance companies that are writing libraries today. Utica National, when I, when I speak of going to comp uh, competition. Utica National. Hanover Insurance Company, which we got a bid from this year. Okay, uh, Chubb writes a little bit of them, but not so much anymore. And then you get the Lyra program, a special library insurance program. I can't speak to that program, um, but so those are like the main companies that we write. But this year, when we took it out to bid, we went to all of our markets and um, the main market that was competitive was Hanover Insurance Company. Uh, Chubb was, I think, mean, close to double the price of what the other insurance companies were. Um, so, um, in moving, or if you wanted to move from Utica National and Hanover to Hanover, you run the risk of, or let me, let me back up and say, the reason that Utica National is so competitive is because they include the directors and officers liability as part of their package insurance. Other insurance companies have to go the other, you know, they have to go out and buy a separate policy. Like when I came on board here, there was a separate uh, company named Philadelphia who was writing the directors and officers policy. They also include a little bit of cyber liability. And so we have to go out and buy a separate cyber liability. So Utica National, um, writing the business insurance, Hanover writing the workers' comp. We moved the workers' comp to Hanover uh, probably about four or five years ago when Hartford, who was the workers' comp company at the time, non-renewed the library due to losses, due to workers' comp losses. Uh, 
this particular year, we went to, as I said, those other insurance companies, and we went to Hanover to write the whole package. They're about where Utica National comes in, but they are still a little bit higher. Um, and that would include us having to go out and buy a separate directors and officers liability policy and a separate uh, cyber liability policy. So my recommendation was to renew with the same insurance companies that we had because they actually lowered your premium from 62752 to 59521 Hanover is at 59918 with their additional, uh, and I believe you've all had a copy of this proposal, so yes. excuse me. And then the Chubb, etc., was $104,000. So, um, and, and speaking of that, um, in a time where insurance premiums are going up, uh, going up due to large property projects with hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that, they didn't get the memo that there was a pandemic going on. Property insurance rates going up, right? Directors and officers' liability premiums going up dramatically, uh, mainly due to the employment practices liability exposure where some organizations, lots of organizations, had to terminate employees. Those employees came back and said, we're suing you for discrimination. So the directors and officers market is going up anywhere between 30 and 50 percent. Uh, the last one is the cyber liability. If you read the papers and you listen to the TV, you can see there's a lot of cyber hacks going on out there. So keeping that in mind with what your renewal is, this was a very good report, very good news to the Miles Public Library that we were able to combine all these together. Okay? Does anybody have any questions or uh, that I can help assist with? Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Carolyn. Uh, I think after uh, not only hear Jeff's presentation, I think you need a motion to uh, accept the proposal that uh, Cousin Coker has provided to us. I just have one question. So the total premium... Not so fast, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, here we are. <laughs> oh, no, no. It, I'm sure Greg can answer this. I'm sorry. No, no. I just, I just, I'm looking at the document. But... I'll hold tight. Oh, okay. I was just um, comparing the 21, 22... Total then is fifty nine five twenty one. Am I understanding? That's correct. That? Yes. Okay. And last year it was sixty two seven fifty two. Yes. That's correct. Okay. Great. That's up there. I just want to make sure I understood that. Okay. And now I will entertain a motion. Let's see. Sorry. Right, uh, do I have a motion for the library to approve the recommended purchase? of liability and workers' compensation insurance in the total amount of $59,521. So moved. Second. Okay. Go ahead. Second. Okie doke. Second. So we'll give you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so, Margaret, would you please take... Are, are, there, are there any questions? I apologize. No? Okay. Margaret, would you please take the roll? Thank you. Trustee Dribbler? Yes. Trustee Nanushek? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Nakula? Yes. Trustee Mazensky? Yes. Trustee Olson? Yes. Make your motion. Trustee Keen Adams? Yes. I move to uh, switch item E, which Involves the uh, library continuing to participate in non resident library debt card program and setting the $303.02 uh, with item G, which is uh, moved to adopt the ordinance 2102, tentative ordinance providing the budget and appropriation for the county of Illinois for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021, and ending June 30th, 2022 in the amount of five million nine hundred and seven thousand two hundred and forty four dollars. Joe, can I ask why you want to switch those two? I because we wanted 
keep the meeting going and well and by keeping it going isn't it best to just follow what we're doing we're going through okay. it maybe what about we'd like to move that what do we need to do to move an item we just did it so the board agrees everybody agrees that it's okay to move it like they did with jack cook then okay so it. do we need to take a vote to see if it's true you could it's up to you your call well i mean are you going to just move it or do you need a vote i don't, I don't know what you need I'm going to do it right. Yeah, professional parliamentarian. Yeah, we just moved one item. Does, does anyone disagree with moving it? Yeah. Is it all right? Is everybody to move it? No. Okay, we'll take a call. We'll take a roll because it's hard to understand who's saying what. Need a motion or a second. Okay, so we, I motion that we move item number or letter number E. To approve the library continue to participate in the non-residential library card program setting the fee at $303.02 to letter number G. And G, which is moved to adopt ordinance 21022 tentative ordinance providing the budget and appropriation, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021 and ending June 2022 to E. Because we're switching these two. And is that a chart? I second. I move it. I move it. I need a motion. Okay. I move it. 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 I Uh, Trustee Drulik? Yes. Trustee Manusha? Yes. 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 Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Rosansky? No. Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Kienz? Uh, it's hard to say yes when I, we haven't been given a proper reason because no. it, the, exactly. it's just flipping something. We're going to still go through it, right? But I kind of feel like maybe this is going to get pushed to the end to be tabled. That's the feeling I'm getting. Uh -huh. So yes, my vote is no. Okay. Okay. So um, so we are now on item eleven B. Okay. No, 11A. So we're just going to start off, oh, right? Yes. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve the distribution up to 1500 I move to table 11A. Oh. I second. Okay. I suggest that we take a vote. You know, make sure this agenda is correct before it's sent out. <laughs> I mean, you make the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, not all of it. But can, um, well, can we take the roll? should please? approve it. But mm -hmm. you send it out. I know. Well, you know, I'm working on it. Maybe the next meeting will, maybe the next agenda creation can work that way. Okay. You're welcome. Can so I ask one ahead. question before we move this? Can you tell me when you plan on moving this to? Moving what? Table. Table. Tabling. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I missed the long term. Thank you, Susan. Okay, can we take the roll now? Thanks so much. Can, can you answer my question? When are you planning on tabling this too, please? Excuse me, but Director Lanky answered your question. Did you? To the next meeting. To the next meeting. Is meeting. that the one you just threw at us at 4.30 today for Friday? No, that would be the next regular meeting. The next regular meeting? Good. Thank you for explaining that. Okay. Before we vote, I have the motion. I don't know if that motion is. Right now, she is motioning to table that. And there is no vote on the table. Can we have a formal vote? Yeah, we need to have a table. She wants to hear a discussion of a table. You need a vote to table. Okay, we need a vote to table. So she would like to hear the. The, the motion so she knows what she's going on. I motion to table to approve distribution up to $1,500 subject to further review 
with a temporary communications technology and procedural consultant, Gizel Gizel Mizzle Productions. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Margaret, would you please take the mic? Trustee Dirley? Yes. Trustee Nunshek? Yes. Wait, is there any discussion? No, no. no. Because you're just tabling it. It's no discussion when you're tabling it. Oh, you just vote yes or no. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. Trustee Wazenski? Okay. Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Keen Adams? Yes. Okay, the next item on the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? The termination of legal services by Clark Baird Smith LLP and approval of legal services by Heinzelman Law LLC. So moved. Second. I have a question. In a minute, to please. I'm asking a question. Can I ask my question now or do I have to wait? Well, you have you to wait, actually. Okay, thank you. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was trying to be polite. this I have to change the wording of the motion it has to read do I have a motion that the library district immediately terminate the legal representation of Clark Baird Smith LLP for the legal services as approved at the May 24th 2021 meeting of the Board of Trustees and to direct the library director to immediately provide notice of such termination to Clark Baird Smith LLP. A motion. Second. Okay. Maybe that writing if you no problem. And I move to hire Heinzel Law LLC under the Excuse terms. Excuse me, Carolyn, should this be a separate motion since we've already made a motion for this one? Should we vote on this motion? Or well, this actually, since this there's motion? an and, why don't I just put it all in this one? Then I take away my motion. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And I move to hire Heinzel Law LL, Heinzelman Law LLC under the terms of the engagement letter dated June 9, 2021, and the attached terms of the engagement to that letter for legal services not to authorize and to authorize the board president execute the same on behalf of the library district. That's one motion? That's yes. one motion. I move to separate She's those two items. Okay, you can't two because things. that's the way the Why attorney can't separate. We? This is from the attorney. Please let's not argue. Which attorney is from? Okay. From Heiselman, probably, <laughs> since that's the one she's voting to hire. Okay, Thank can, you. I a, a, can I have a... I, I'm sorry, Carolyn, I asked a question. Which attorney is that from? Second. Okay, it's from the library's attorney, okay. Klein, Thorpe, and Jenkins. Okay. Acceptable? What is from them? This it's an history. Right? Right? Thank you. Said to work. Okay, so now that I have a second, are there any, is there any Can you discussion? repeat that motion? So we Absolutely. Can what we're going for. Yes, Absolutely. it would have been helpful to have a copy of that. Well, I will contact the attorney and remind can you. Can you pass it down? I'd like to see it. No, I'll speak it, in, it in out loud so you can hear it. You know, we can't make a mockery of this board any further. Okay? I move that the library district immediately terminate the legal representation of Clark Baird Smith LLP for the legal services as appointed on May 24, 2021, meeting in the Board of Trustees and to direct the library director immediately to provide notice of such termination to Clark Baird Smith and to hire Heinzelman Law LLC under the terms of the engagement letter dated June 9, 2021 and the, and the attached terms of engagement to that letter for legal services and to authorize the board president to execute the same on behalf of the library district. Okay, with that being read, and we have a, we did get a second, correct? And we're ready to make to have com comments. Okay, um, Joe, do you have what, any What comments? this involves is the the partnership that we originally decided to engage back in May, if you recall from the executive session. 
they changed uh, the partnership around so that uh, the Ms. Heiselman or whatever is, is who, who engaged for our services is, is in a different partnership. So that's all we're doing is just changing the name, not, not the attorney or anything. Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. And I would appreciate it if I'm allowed to say everything I'd like to say. Thank you. Um, I have no problem canceling the attorney that Clark, Bear, and Smith. But when it comes to hiring uh, Heiselman, who is located not in Illinois, but in Wisconsin, when Carolyn refused to have any outside the state consultants. She's not just over the border, but she's near Minnesota border. She charges $340 an hour when Klein Thorpe and Jenkins, who have been our attorney, charge $235 an hour. That is a difference of $105 an hour. Um, then, they, there was a slight misleading by Carolyn when she informed us that our attorney that we have at the time did not have an attorney who handled employee issues. This is incorrect. Not only do they have a person who already handles these issues, but they are currently handling issues pertaining to union issues for another library. And since we all know the union is coming, if it isn't already here, I think it's advisable to have an attorney who is local and who doesn't charge us an extra $105 an hour. Thank you. Trustee Olson? Thank you. Well, I'm surprised to hear this. Uh, we voted for Clark, Baird, and Smith at uh, one of the meetings a couple of weeks ago. And yes, we were misled. I, it makes me um, kind of, we were misled that our attorney did not practice labor law. But they do, which is kind of a shady, unethical thing that you are presenting here. Uh, Ms. Heinzelman is the same attorney that was with uh, Clark Garrett and Smith. She's not with Clark, and they charge $105 an hour. You know what? Work. Let's let Trusty Olson finish. And, and then yes. Yes, the hourly pay is uh, so much more as Patty has suggested or told us. Um, no, uh, this is just unacceptable, unethical. And, uh, I can't. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Keen Adams? I, I'm also concerned that we're looking for someone. I know that it was passed at that meeting. I did not vote, that, <clears throat> vote for that. Um, and so I am concerned that we have someone now that was with one company and now seems to have started her own company um, but it doesn't appear when I search for it online so I don't know where it's at yet in that respect uh, I know that there was a conversation had by phone also um, with someone named Lisa Calloway who was working with Yvette uh, who was with a company called Engler Calloway Boston and Strada in Oak Brook so I'm not sure why Yvette Heinzelman is working with someone in Oak Brook if she has her own company. It just doesn't, it is most certainly not transparent. I think I also asked for references for Yvette during our meeting and I have never seen those. So I'm not confident in her skills. I know nothing about her. She doesn't appear in a search online. I don't know if she has experience working with unions and that's really what we need her for at this point. So uh, I'm, I'm not down with that. Okay. So, okay, so um, as far as why attorneys work for different firms, 
Uh, what, you'll, what you'll learn is that due to um, the size of cases, attorneys from different law firms work with other law firms to accomplish many, many different cases, even though they're not being held at their company. It, it's a very common practice, but let's get back to this particular attorney. The reason we chose Yvette Heinzelman is because her expertise is in labor law. That's everything, that's what she does. That's what she does specifically. Now, Kleinthorpe and Jenkins represents the library, but their specialty isn't labor law. Now, I'm sure they can get someone to do whatever they do, but she was highly recommended because she already but handled- she recommended by? You right. never put it by in those documents. Say what? I asked you for documents of reference during the meeting, and I was no one was ever provided with reference. We yes. not only that we were given like two minutes to look over. Okay, stuff. well you were given all her documentation, and, um, and as what, can this, I just finish? Let her finish. Let her finish. Oh my God! Yeah. Please finish. Okay, for starters, labor law is a specialty area. Yeah. Attorney yeah. Yvette Heinzelman, who specializes in labor law, was approved because. We needed her expertise, and because the documentation I gave you, she was referred to me from other people, other governmental entities that have used her in their situations with labor law. Of course, labor law isn't just unions. It, it can cover many aspects. So that's why we suggested her. That's why I recommended her. She was approved. She's now starting her own business, and she's already engaged in conversations and tonight is just to switch the name of the company. So, are there any other comments? Yes. Again, I called Kleinfort and whatever their name is, Jenkins, and I found out they do have legal attorneys that work for their firm. And their fees are $105 an hour less. If you're so concerned about saving our citizens' money, you should look at that. Thank you. The decision is based on labor law being a confidential, separate issue from the, reg the regular library attorneys, um, the attorneys' uh, work that they do for us. Its purpose is to keep them separate because of the fact that we are getting involved in labor issues. And her expertise, that it's not questionable. Yes, Trustee Rothen. Thank you for calling me again. First of all, like I had said before, Carolyn, whenever there was anybody who wasn't in our state who put forth a contract for us to consider, you shot them down. And we live in an area where there are so many offices, and so many lawyers, to go to somebody who's near the Minnesota border is kind of, I'm sorry, ridiculous. Especially when, as I will repeat, Klein or Thorpe and Jenkins has. Even though they're considered right now our attorneys, they have labor lawyers that work for their group. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, can I say can something? Oh, sure. Uh, so sometimes you get what you pay for with lawyers because <laughs> they're specialized, they've had a lot of training, they work in one area, and when, you know, you don't want to have a divorce lawyer doing your uh, library law. Okay. Just, just passing the bar is not... Okay, Joe, and I understand what you're saying. However, when you're saying the firm we deal with has labor law attorneys, that is comparing apples to apples, which you have a tendency not to do. And when you are a government agency, you are required to take a lower bid, not the highest one. Not $105 an hour more an hour. I believe that's all the public comments are. Would you please take a vote? Trustee Jubilee? Yes. Trustee Nanushak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. No. 
Trustee Mapula? Yes. Trustee Rosansky? Absolutely no. Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Keen Adams? No. The next item on the agenda is 11C. Do I have a motion to adopt a resolution of the Board of Library Trustees of the Niles Main District Library of Cook County, Illinois, regarding closed session recordings and minutes? Kosher. 
This the vote is for the resolution. I believe we should have resolutions for what we vote on. It's not a practice in the past, but I think we should have them going forward because then we always have a legal documented record. What? So Trustee Olson? Oh, um, I think we should pick apart this resolution. Well, you there can't. are so many things in it that don't make any sense. You know, if you maybe um, you want to contact the attorney and he can help you understand. No, I don't it. need to contact the attorney. I need to know who wrote this up. The attorney. The, the, the attorney. The, 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 the same Excuse thing me. Excuse me. Board. Excuse me. What? What is? You're both talking at the same time. Sorry. Is someone asking me a question? No, I, I'm sorry. Ask her. Well, can I ask who wrote this? Yes. yes. Attorney okay. Walsh, Klein Thorpe, and Jenkins. Okay, they, okay. Um, is that acceptable? No. The oh, way that you're, that's acceptable. not acceptable the way you're speaking to her either, really. Um, did you read this? Right to speak and minutes? Excuse about me, minutes. Can we, are we talking about this resolution? Well, you this is, further? it talks about this resolution exactly. Okay, well, you know what, there, all I can tell you is this resolution was created by the library's attorney. It is definitely accurate and enforceable. I can't debate it. All I can say, if you need further explanation, if you have questions and you feel no, differently, I would, I would definitely like speak with him. From you. And I'm, I'm not the attorney. To make some comments. I'm not okay. the attorney. Fine, then don't answer. I will make some comments without any okay, input fine. from you. Thank you. Or are you going to say I can't? Okay. Because the statute requires that, in quote, access to minutes shall be granted to the covered body's main office or the official storage location, unquote. That would seem to indicate that the minutes should be stored in the office or an official storage location, which there supposedly they used to be here in the office of the public body. Storing it in someone's home is not appropriate. What if it's stolen? What if it's damaged? What if it's destroyed? Who's going to be responsible? Is Suzanne going to be responsible for any kind of accident they, who, that might happen? Because why should the library be responsible for it if it's stored in her home? That is totally not what the Library Act intended. And the fact that, so I find out from Patty now, that the records are already moved, I mean, that is against the Library Act in itself. Not supposed to move the material without a vote of the library board or actually out of, uh, of the public body. Same thing. Hmm? Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> um, I'd like to know how we could access, what, what's the procedure for accessing these uh, recordings? If I want to listen to one, can you answer that one? Absolutely. We will definitely create a procedure. I'll ask for instruction from the attorney so I don't violate anybody's rights. This is not the first time this procedure has ever been enforced. It's not violating any statute. We're talking about closed session minutes. So this is a this is a common practice. It's done elsewhere. So it's not, it's not a personal choice, it's not a personal decision. Well, who decided that you needed to do this and move the library, the records of a closed session? Who decided that? It's I on the table for vote. Pardon me? It's on the table for vote, and it's your choice how you vote. According to this uh, resolution, you claim that the president and the board of trustees determine that it is in the best interest 
to move them. That's what the vote will Where represent once you vote. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's oh, it's terminology. How will we determine if it works or not? The oh, vote. Okay. We're talking about the vote. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. Oh. Okay. I yes. disagree with this. They should be. Again, it's an unethical. It's not finished. Let me state one more time this is unethical. Okay, thank you. Trustee Keeney Adams is next. Do you want to go ahead, Joe, before I... The secretary is responsible for the uh, uh, minutes and the, and the recordings, and uh, not not the for people at the library, not the director or somebody else. So if they're lost or there's some problem, it's on uh, the secretary's uh, head, basically. And she can vouch for the security of the tapes or minutes. Okay, so my question, I guess, is that determining that it is in the best interest. What can someone, I guess, Carolyn, since you're the one that put this together with the lawyer, can you speak to what that means? What the best interests are? Why is it not in the best interest to have it here instead of somewhere else? Why is it more? Since executive session is confidential, the confidentiality lies with the board. And so does the information. And that's your reasoning. Mm -hmm. that's your reason. um, I also would like to know, um, Suzanne, um, you, I wanted to confirm that you did take home that um, recording mm -hmm. that, that meet that day. Yes. Was that your own decision? Were you led to do that? Or how did that come about? Were you aware that it was supposed to stay here at that point? We needed to vote first for that to happen? No, I did not. I don't know that the vote is so she can take it. The vote is to have a resolution, so we have a legal document. Whenever we vote, we seem to lose track of what we're voting on. Uh, I'm, still I'm not losing track. track of anything, thank no. you very much. Can Pardon I, me? Can I ask? This question. No, Andy. please. Trust okay, me, fine, fine, I'm sorry, fine, fine. God forbid I should ask a question. Okay, can we move this along? Is that, it's like we're done. No, I'm not done. I, I'm not going to be rushed, Thank you. Well, please, come up with some new comments and, and you know, we, this, we can't just belabor this point. You've all said the same thing over and over again, and we've answered it. And it's got these terms. I just want to point out, this is, although it is legal, it's walking a fine line like you, like we are doing with so many things at this point. It's not in the best interest of the library or, I mean, I, I, if it was me, Suzanne, I wouldn't want that anywhere near my house, you know? And, and yes, I would like to see it. Maybe I can come over tomorrow and hear it. Sure. Well, That'd actually, actually, we'll talk to the attorney and find out what the procedure is. So who is it accessible to now, if tomorrow? So right now, the minutes haven't even been recorded. But she has the recording. Okay, you know what? This conversation house. is ended. I will talk to the attorney. Again, you're you saying you're looking My questions are valid. Them. You just don't want to hear I it. don't know the answer. I'm not going to sit here and guess. Well, you should have thought together. about it before you wrote Well, you know what? No one has ever requested to see um, minutes of a closed session no. in all the years you guys have been on the no. board. So let's just move on. If but there aren't any new questions, we're done. Anymore. It's very suspicious what okay, is happening. Well, I'm sorry it's suspicious. Call the attorney and he'll, he'll, he'll set your fears at ease. But we need to move on here. We are okay. digressing. Go ahead. Move on. Okay. Margaret, would you please take the vote? Trustee Jillard? Yes. Trustee Hanushak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Makula? Yes. No. Trustee Rosetsky? Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Keen Adams? No. Okay, a motion D. Do I have a motion to approve the light? Oh, sorry, wrong one. Do I have a motion to approve the accounting and consulting services of Evans, Marshall, and Keith, PC certified public accountants on an hourly basis between
between $150 and $300. So moved. Second. Second? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, we're open for discussion. Um, let me start off with. Okay, the purpose of this motion is to um, is to hire an outside accounting firm that is um, certified and accountable to the board licensed and certified who will make um, our processes for um, handling our current documentation and reports efficiently and effective but also they will be handling our filings and other legal matters um, this particular accounting firm is um, their expertise is in governmental and municipalities so they are well familiarized with what is required for the accounting and financial aspects of our library. And um, they uh, reviewed a lot of our documentation and they um, definitely um, have made uh, quite a few recommendations. But my, my purpose to having um, this firm handle our accounting is because, as you know, we had many, many issues with our processes and procedures, and um, what issues are sometimes we, we fail to, one time we fail to pay our Social Security. Um, I know that... Um, Excuse me? Mm -hmm. yeah. We failed to pay Social Security? Yes, was it a year ago when the payment was forgotten? It's in the minutes. It's on the board meeting. Yeah, it's in the, on the board agenda. But you should care of it later. I'll look it up for you if you need a date. I'm sorry, I didn't actually get that like thorough. We'd like to get that information. Yes, we would care about that. Absolutely. And big deal. Yeah. Well, you know, I wouldn't sit here and make it up. I wouldn't sit here and make it up. Okay, and then also, um, as you know, just recently, I noticed our consolidated income statement, for example, didn't match our check register. For some reason, the check I'm register... That. The check register has checks that affect balance sheet accounts that don't hit the P&L. Now, the problem, the, re the reason was that whoever put it together was, losing, was using last year's figures by mistake. That was exactly your response. I'm not making this up. I mean, you don't remember that either. I can certainly take the time okay. to find that. Okay. But let me tell you a couple other things. Um, two years ago, we hired Lauterbach and Amon to be our auditors. And um, they came in, and after their audit, they provided us with what's called a management letter. And in the management letter, they brought it to our attention that um, we had outstanding checks that we had not accounted for. I believe it went back to 2013. So um, not only did we have to provide a check to the Illinois, to the state of Illinois treasurer, but they instructed us we should have had a policy and that at that time, we created a policy so that these checks would no longer be ignored. In addition, he mentioned that um, we do not have a documented or uh, inventory process or tagging process for all of our capital, um, our, our um, capital assets. And um, they requested that we had a year to um, accomplish that. For some reason, we didn't do that, but um, the accounting firm decided the next year that it was fine. So to me, that was questionable. We, we had a problem with not having a policy or a procedure in place. We didn't change anything. We still don't have a procedure in place. 
but that accounting firm or that auditing firm decided it was fine. So I think we need to have a governmental municipal accounting firm that will come in here and make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do. Again, we're funded by by the residents. This is governmental money, and we need to make sure what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. And and there have been other issues where we've had problems here and there, and I just feel like I feel I just don't feel confident that we can continue to do this on our own. I, I think what we need is an outside firm to give us direction and make sure that we can make the necessary filings, make sure if we're, if we're not following a procedure as far as capital assets, which is huge, that we do that. And since this firm, and the key about this firm is since they handle municipal and governmental entities, they're well aware of the differences in library accounting as opposed to corporate or something like that. But that was my, um, that, that's just a, a short synopsis on, on why I think um, they, we are in need of this firm. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Oh yeah. Or comments? I think an outside firm would, would, give, would give us confidence that everything we're doing is correct. Done normally in business where they bring in outside people to do their accounting, their auditing, accounting. Oh, sorry, trustee. Um, I agree with Joe. Of course. Trustee has a No. Need a Trustee Rosansky? Yes, I do have a, quite a few things to say according to this. First of all, what you were suggesting, granted, everybody makes slip-ups occasionally, but to have auditors come, and I've been here for six years, and I've sat in the audit, and maybe there's two or three things that they ask to change. They are addressed. Last year, there was zero, which is unheard of. Not only that, but the December before last, what was the award you received, Greg, from the Illinois government? Uh, it was a uh, budget presentation award for the 2019 budget from the uh, IGF board. So they don't give this award to people who are screwing up, like you're suggesting. Not only that, but Carolyn, when we have had budgets, and they've come back and said two or three things that they think need to be addressed, you've turned to them and asked, do you think we need a forensic audit? Because you're digging for stuff, Carolyn, and you're doing it right now. My other concern about this is, Greg does more than just the budget, or the, uh, oh, she's got me so annoyed. The, the, the accounting, thank you. What other things are on your plate that you handle for the library, right? Please. Um, I handle uh, marketing and uh, uh, PR communications. I handle uh, HR uh, benefits, health insurance, uh, IMRF. Um, I, I, I work with uh, Rich on uh, IT issues and planning. I work with Dave. Um, uh, facilities management issues, um, and I work with uh, Athena on uh, patient services, uh, staffing, and uh, scheduling and prosecution mm -hmm. of that particular uh, uh, asset of the business. I also uh, work with them on uh, passports, to make sure that we're, uh, we're compliant with all the Department of State rules and uh, regulations. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thank you. Another thing, I found out that if we hire an accounting firm, the board members themselves are more liable for lawsuits against us. Uh, I don't know about you, I know we are insured for this, but this concerns me also. Um, and the fact that you happen to put this 
at the rate uh, well, no, let's get back to this. The fact that you expect this accounting firm, what do you expect them? Do you expect them to come to meetings? Um, will we have to pay them at their rate for meetings, uh, which were not too cheap? Please, let me know what you expect, what, what this is actually going to, how is this actually going to present itself? And do you plan on doing something to Greg's responsibilities by doing this? Are you the I'm addressing you, I, yes. I I'm looking at like. you. Okay, so what question would you like me to answer? First of all, do you plan, how are you planning on actually using these people? Are they coming to meetings? Are they going to? That's, part, just, that's, that's a possibility. I think I think um, that may that may be necessary in the in the beginning. But you know, again, our budget meetings should really flow, and only the business at hand should be discussed instead of you know ranting and going on and on. So if you're concerned okay, about you. if you're concerned about costs, we need to get a little more professional in our meetings, and that that will help there. I uh, thank you. I this, also want to know how is this going to affect what Greg's responsibility does. This is an accounting firm that will handle the accounting and financial aspects of our company. When they come in here, that's what that'll be. So, the are you right planning to handle. negatively or, or to take some responsibilities from Greg? How is this going to be affect Greg and his department? That's what I want to know. Well, his his he just explained all of his responsibilities. Yes. We're bringing in an outside accounting firm. When they come in, they see what we have, what needs to be done. That's on, that'll be determined. So is this a short-term thing, or are you planning on keeping them permanently? Short-term for an accounting firm? Well, I don't know. Are they planning? Are you planning on having them do our uh, our yearly uh, thing we have, where they come in and they evaluate auditing? auditing thank you. What exactly of doing are you? That as well. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay, thank fine. You. But they, they, they're qualified, if that's your, if okay. that's your question. Okay, fine, thank you. And to have somebody who's doing the work actually audit themselves, I question the legalities of that. Well, you see, that's the part you don't understand. Well, yeah, I guess I don't. There, are different, there are different subdivisions in, 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 in the accounting firms, so I think, yeah, that's a subject for another time. Let's just stay on this one. Okay, fine. Trustee Olson. Okay, um, you say that we need somebody who's licensed and certified. Well, we have one. Um, and you made a lot of accusations against Mr. Frick. I didn't make any accusations. Oh, the about everything well, you said was an accusation. I, I perhaps under the carpet. Never mind. Right. I would like, Greg, do you want to defend anything? that she said you want to excuse me public comments are over sir no i really don't i really don't want to thank you okay because i think we already know the answer anyway you say there's a lot of issues in our processes and and everything that you mentioned well i think rick has an answer but he's being kind enough not to prolong the meeting um you say that you want more confidence in the work being done and everything that Greg has done has provided confidence for all of us. Accuracy. And again, I don't know, I would actually like to hear from a couple of other board trustees about any of these things that we're talking about tonight because this is very unusual that we don't hear from them. Again, highly unethical, again, Yeah. Trustee Keenan's 
Probably. Yes. I, I guess I don't know where to start or end. It's just another, there's so many things that are being thrown in in the rapid fire succession. It's just not a normal thing for a board to have to go through all these things at once in the beginning of a new term for four people. Um, I don't think that we need this. I think Greg is doing a great job. I think that fact that Lauterbach and Amon gave us a great review. I mean, they do those for many different libraries. I think I brought it up at that time that they audit all different libraries around the area, and, and we got like the best one. Um, and I am pretty sure that you know, in the next couple of months, we're going to have an agenda item saying that we want to get rid of Lauterbach and Amon because you didn't like what they said. And I will be looking out for those documents that you say you're going to go back and find about the Social Security payment and the checks. So I'm looking for those. Um, they're, they're on a video, so it's going to take a while. Okay, well, I'll be waiting. So the one was the Social Security payment. What was the other one you wanted to You tell me. Whatever you said. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to read all these pages. What comments were you concerned about? Whatever mistakes you May uh, mention for Greg. I would like documentation of all those that you mentioned. Okay. Well, um, um, Director Lemke could probably provide you with a copy of the management letter from uh, Louder. Um, what is their name? Yeah, I, I do want to mention though that they said at the time that they, they were, yeah, that they said to us that they make those recommendations to virtually all of their new clients because very few clients have those things in place already, and they like to give you value for your money. So they put something in a management letter. They were very satisfied with how promptly we responded to their suggestions, and they made no suggestions the following year. And as I mentioned in my letter to you, I am extremely disappointed that this was brought up without any word to me, his boss. It was, he finds out that you're doing it through an agenda item instead of a kind conversation. I think it's absolutely disgraceful. I'm very ashamed of the way that we are behaving here. I think the question is, if I could just respond to the, the management letter from um, Lauterbach and Amon, it is not a common practice. So he said, they said it at Susan, the Susan, Susan, it is not a common practice to ignore outstanding checks for several years. Maybe a lot of people are doing this. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, he was he was he was straightforward with what our issues were. And my point is to not be paying attention to outstanding checks for like eight years, six what? years. That's a very long time, and it cost us. You know, ladies, get the management letter, please, because it, it's well, just too much. Management letter. No, you know what? We're on the same board. I'm tired of this game we play. Nobody no, remembers. Oh, well, I remember apparently better than you because I remember them complimenting Greg. Okay, I'm looking for action right now. Go ahead. So, I um, think Patty, your question didn't get answered about whether or not you're going to take duties away from Greg for this. I think that was a question you were trying to do. When the accounting firm comes in and they evaluate what we do, they'll be working with Greg. That doesn't answer the question. I, I'm not determining what's happening. I don't know what, 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 what all is oh, to be done. On. I know they need input from our, depa our, our accounting department. What do you think? I, I have an idea what an yes, accounting firm yes, is going to yes, do. Yes, we do. Oh, it's very what? apparent you have an agenda. Yes, I do. I have an item on the agenda. It's for this accounting firm. And if there aren't any more questions, could we please take a vote? Let's take a vote. Do we need to move to take a vote? Uh, no, it's Margaret. Yeah. Yes, please, sorry. Trustee Gerblich? Yes. Trustee Munchak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee McCullough? Yes. No. Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Keenan Adams? No. Four yeses. Three no's. Passes.
And is this where you're changing to the budget now? Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, the next item is E11. E, which is now E11G. Do I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2102, Tentative Ordinance Providing for Budget and Appropriation, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021, and ending June 30, 2022? So moved. Um, Documents you the two you gave us, I mean, the, the numbers are relatively the same. Um, yeah, the, uh, uh, the spreadsheet uh, does have a couple of numbers on it. Um, the first two, actually the first three columns show uh, from left to right the uh, budget that was originally presented to the board. And then the uh, green stripe, I'll call it, down the uh, second column shows what actually is being used to generate the uh, tentative ordinance 2102. Okay. And then the third column shows the differences uh, be between the first two columns. Thank you. I was just doing math, and now that you've mentioned it, I don't have to do any more subtracting. Thank you. And uh, the second thing you have is a copy of the tentative ordinance. Uh, and the tentative ordinance uh, agrees to the uh, uh, first sheet, the spreadsheet uh, uh, that I gave you. I know you mentioned that some of these line items are um, like a um, an accumulation of items. Yes. And, and the example you gave me was supplies from various areas. Yes. But are there any other line items? Yes. Could you help me identify them? Or? So the library materials. Um, what instead, page? Uh, yeah, it's on the second page. It's the first page of the ordinance. Okay. Well, so we're looking at that versus this. Okay. On the first uh, page of the ordinance, uh, under library materials, you have uh, four line items uh, as opposed to eight or something like that. One, two, three. So, uh, Nine. So all, uh, all books and periodical costs are lumped together under books and periodical instead of breaking it into adult, juvenile, and teen. Uh, additionally, um, uh, the professional collection amount from operating expenses is put into that line. Awesome. Because, because it, is, it is books, uh, essentially. Okay. Uh, AB, uh, similarly, instead of having adult, youth, and teen, is, is just collapsed into one line AB. Um, I'm not going to be able to recall all of these from memory, but I'll, I'll give you my best shot. Going uh, to operating expenses, um, under operating expenses, programming and support, uh, we have four line items, uh, juvenile, events, teen, and adult, and they're grouped as programming and support for uh, at 67 and 646. Um, where we have uh, under library operating, where we have per capita grant and grant other expenditures, those are pulled out. They're shown at the end. Seventy-five, five thirty-five. Now, you know, I, I, 
Yeah, I did send you, uh, I did send you and Mr. Mafula a, a reconciliation uh, to show, you know, what was actually on the spreadsheet compared to what was uh, reflected on the appropriation ordinance by a major category. And essentially, there's, uh, you know, in terms of a grouping, there's there's only two moves. One is the uh, professional collection, um, which which was I want to say eight thousand five hundred and sixty-two, but I'm not I'm not picking it up by the way. Yeah. Is that eight thousand five hundred and sixty-two? Oh, that there is. What page is that? Uh, it's on page three of, um, of, this of the spreadsheet. One. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a little more than halfway down. Yes, right Just follow the, the green stripe. Mm -hmm. It's like the fifth number under uh, the library art and total, 8562. So that was moved up to library materials, as I said, in books and periodicals. So if you try to match the if you try to match the totals for general and administration to the totals for uh, general and administration and the ordinance, you're going to be locked by the amount. Uh, the second thing is, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, uh, the grant expenditures, uh, which are like 75 and change, 75, uh, 355. Uh, that was pulled out of uh, library operating and reflected at the bottom uh, at the bottom of the uh, uh, page two. Okay. If you want, I, you know, I, I can I could map each number for you, uh, but you know, I, I don't have that with me right now. You know, I, I was going to ask that. Um, would it be possible for you to maybe email? Um, Certainly. You know, like it, the line items you would show what items were, are really in that group. But sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I can have it all. Okay, thank you so much. So the other thing, um, the other thing that I did, but I, I didn't pass it out, um, that I thought was useful is I think the total amount of the budget that was uh, presented on uh, Monday night. And I rolled it forward uh, with the number of changes that were made. So that it comes up to the uh, 5,907,243. Uh, I want the dollars. I want the dollars. Uh, and if you'd like, I can go through that. Um, I can also provide this uh, via email if anybody's interested. Email would be good, thank you. Should I go through it? Yeah. Um, I don't know that you want to go through an entire another report, but you can email it because it doesn't change anything. It just has all the numbers that we already have, correct? You just, you just... Well, I mean, to be fair, mm -hmm. uh, to be fair, uh, we had a number of changes subsequent to, you know, to the total budget to presentation. Meeting, yeah. Right. yeah. I know that's why the budget went up. What was it, $500,000 it went up? About four hundred. Yeah, so because of those um, changes, to see. the budget's right. gone up. So, oh, where it has. Okay. I'll hit, I'll hit the larger ones. Oh, thank you. Um, from uh, uh, from Joe's budget, the Social Security uh, expense uh, increased by two hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. It was a it was a bad number on, uh, on the sheets that we were using. Um, there was also an increase in uh, consulting by one hundred thousand uh, dollars. Downloadables went from uh, ninety-two thousand four hundred to one hundred thousand. It was seventy-six hundred. Uh, we reinstated uh, approximately uh, $39,000 of maintenance expenses um, related to uh, uh, Dave's uh, maintenance department since we were we were cutting out the meeting. How much was that? Uh, approximately $39,000. I think it's $39,178. Okay. 
Does that also cover the person that you said you are going to hire for to take his position yes. in January? Yes. Okay. $25,175 uh, is allocated to that. Um, $81,131 was put into uh, special reserve for uh, building repairs, $7,000 for building repairs, and $74,131 for uh, equipment. And health insurance uh, was increased by 6,616 uh, to reflect the numbers that in the memo that I had put together for the board uh, when they had voted on health uh, insurance. So all in all, uh, and there's a couple of uh, smaller ones too um, that I won't get into, but all in all, it was about a $450,000 increase, $454,000. So, um, downloadables, you said increase to 92,000? Yes. No, from 92,400 to 100. So it was an increase of 7,600. the amount of staff needed to fully serve our patrons for the 54 hours per week the library will be open and reflects the long-term and COVID-related downward trend in library usage. We also expect to see more efficient handling procedures and reshelving materials. Schools, daycares, and nursing homes will be responsible for part of their outreach services, reducing the need for staff in this area. We will continue to deliver materials to our homebound patrons with no change in service. Except for one program, the many programs offered by our library are funded in full. This is a long needed and minor restructuring of operations that previous boards neglected to do incrementally. We have reduced operating expenses by approximately 11%, which is much, much less than the current circulation reduction. There's plenty of staff to handle pre-COVID levels of circulation should that occur. Very importantly, this budget is in line with expected tax revenues and will not require any tax increase on our residents. Can we get that in writing, all the Yes. May I get a clarification on one thing you said? Originally you had said that the home delivery would be carried out by volunteers. Are you now saying that it will continue to be carried out by library staff? I think there was some problem uh, discussed about insurance or something like that. There is an issue with volunteers yeah, delivering so, out, so but there I, are cars. I, I so think uh, we, we're going with library staff. Okay, good to know. Yeah. But no schools, no nursing? But at least he is willing to yeah, no, I mean, I what we discussed on the schools and nursing homes is, and, and, and they would send. Was there a third one? We were doing service once a month there. They they could send somebody once a week or whatever they wanted, pick up their books, take them over there, re return them. They'd be responsible for lost materials, and we, we wouldn't be involved in the delivery service. Okay, so them. once a month. Well, well I, the library is doing we'll it once a month. The, the nursing homes could do it every day if they want. So, in other words, Joe, if I 
understand you correctly here. It's okay to deliver to the homebound, but nursing homes and other facilities where our residents live, still, you're saying they have the to pick up the materials? The homebound, they're homebound. They have nobody to help them. The nursing homes have big staffs, large staffs. The people they're paying, uh, either the state pays or somebody pays starting maybe at $4,000, $5,000 a month for, for their care there. there. There's adequate staff to come over here and get the books they want. Many of those nursing homes have libraries, rooms with libraries there. People don't stay there long term usually. Oh, uh, well, they don't. There are people who stay there long term. Some people do. Okay, all right, we've had this discussion before. Would we'll you just move on? Are there any Let's move other on. comments that. Well, when Joe is finished, yes, I'm sure there will be. All right, go right ahead. Are you not going to? I, I couldn't. Uh, write all of that down. Could you repeat? Repeat. Repeat one. Oh, please. You want him to repeat all that? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I do. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know what, uh, Joe, maybe you can make a copy and see that they all get it. What's that? Maybe you can make a copy of what you just read and see if I they all got it. Sure. Oh, please, pass it out then. Thank you so much. Or, or at least pass it out to those who would like a copy. Uh, thank you for my Happy, I don't need it. I, I remember what you said. Thank you. I appreciate that. My recycling bin is getting rather full. suggesting for the senior outreach. Uh, this is one of the things you said all during your campaign is we are bringing the library into the 21st century. Well, this doesn't seem like the 21st century to me. Will your voters agree with you? Uh, Carolyn, last meeting you made a statement that we can always change the budget if we feel it's necessary. You and I both know this is not the case. When a budget is set, it is set. Um, and to plan on a year based on the year of a pandemic, uh, I would hope we get beyond that, but you're not allowing us to do that. Not only that, but you took the budget from the 
year of the pandemic, and you cut it drastically. So, I mean, well, you did cut it. Don't say you didn't cut it. And granted, it was worse when we were here Monday. You have gone up a little. But still, these numbers, when I question the fact that you went down over a hundred and was it 10,000 on one particular pay grade, now I see, okay, you've gone up, but not by much. Um, you still are down 155,000 in there. Uh, oh, it was more than 100, whatever. You're still down drastically. Um, I cannot accept the fact that this is going to help us move forward when you're basing everything on 54 hours of operating. I'm sorry. When everybody else in the state is going back to normal, you're holding us in the pandemic. All right, I just real quickly so I can cover a couple things you brought out. Um, Monday's budget was at 5.44. Tonight's budget is at 5.9. Regarding schools and daycares and trying to realign that process, I don't think it's just a statement. I don't think we pass a budget and it's over. I think we should finally, for once, consider collaborating with schools, the daycares, and a lot of other municipalities around here because there are ways. But you're cutting the budget for them, Carolyn. How are you going to do Can this? Can I please Go ahead, finish. You know, this library will never grow if all we do is start <laughs> and grow. It will never grow if you keep cutting the damn budget. Oh, excuse me, I swear. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have sworn. All right, you know what, I never, guess it's not worth making any you comments. Keep cutting the budget. I have, I have plans. Explain, please, explain. I have plans to interact with the different schools and the daycares. There are many options that we can consider if we meet with them and, and, and discuss what our vision is and how they can help us accomplish still providing all these services. It's not just a one-day conversation. It's, it's a lot more planning than that. As far as getting our residents to this library, there are many avenues to help us out. We just need to reach out to, to the different businesses and the different governmental entities that are in this locality who want to work with us, who I want to work with, who will change the way this looks. It's a lot of things we're not doing now. But what I'm trying to say is passing a budget is only the beginning step. We need to work with everyone else in this community so this library is what it needs to be. And that doesn't mean because we cut the budget we're going to stop breathing and living. We're trying to do it differently. We're trying to bring in different ideas. But you can't even discuss anything here. Everybody no, just okay. screams and yells. I understand what you're saying. So then my yeah, next point, right. my next point for the 110th time, we okay. are not cutting services to seniors. You're not staff to deliver materials to the places where so many of them live. Exactly. Okay, you're delivering, you're delivering to the seniors that are home. When we talk, right? When okay. we talk, wait, wait, when we talk about the three buildings or the three locations that we travel to, they're huge. And if somebody there picks up the books, who is it hurting? When, when, when we don't know source, any, you didn't ask any questions of them before you made this change. You don't know if they have staff that can do this. They may, they may not. And we do far more than three sites. Well, we're there, three three right names, now. there are only three names given during right the pandemic. now because they're so close okay. for pandemic. But we were going there. They're reaching out to us every day. I hope so. Them. I hope so because I've been to several nursing homes and they didn't even know what we provided in this library. I was shocked. Oh, yeah. So there, there's a lot of there's a lot of misinformation. I'm glad the numbers will go up to three, but again, these huge homes, these huge condos that they have, they all have staff. We need to figure out what the solutions are. We don't need to keep saying we're cutting and we're hurting everybody. There are other solutions. But we never take the time to talk about it or discuss it. 
You know, you need to have a plan and you need to move forward. All we do is sit here and argue and keep going, going backwards. This, this is a sensible restructuring. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I do no, think it's funny. No, it's no, really no, good. I'm glad you think it's funny. Uh, I'm glad you think it's funny. You're enjoying this and I love it. My taxpayer money is funny. Yeah, it is. It's also my cash yeah. money. Uh, yeah. okay. I don't mind. Are, are there any more public comments? Are there any more comments? We need to vote. I mean, your money's not going to you. Do you have comments? Yaki yeah. and Diane both. Do you both, please? Yeah. Here you go, micromanaging you again. That's why we hire a wonderful library director to do all the things that you do. Because you just literally made a um, mockery of it. Mockery of it. Yes. You might as well just throw out the standards for Illinois Public Library. It is really disgusting, and I'm going to say for the third time, unethical. All of the things. That you did. Yeah. Uh, I think we've trusted Keenan. Yes, still. I need to hear a speaker. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it just, it, it's like we are, again, throwing all these things into these agendas, six meetings at least in one month, to get all these things thrown out, when really, the, especially the four of us that are new, don't know how libraries work. We don't know even what the programs are in a lot of cases. We don't know what veterans' breakfast means. How could we make these assumptions and make these cuts without really knowing what's going on. We're not cutting any programs. <laughs> it, 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 it says, says in the program, Penny, we were cutting Penny, veterans. if you're cutting services to the senior homes, that is a service. And it's in there and it's being cut. So that is a fact. Um, I, so it is happening. Um, I just think that we really should be taking our time. I'm not saying that we can't do things differently, but these ideas that are, Carolyn, that you're mentioning, I, I would love to hear them. But I would love to hear them before we make the cuts. Because once you make those cuts... I believe there are always solutions, and there are a million... I, I've I wasn't so done. I was just waiting for you to pay attention. Yeah, really. You know what, you know, I need a pen. You know, you got to get past this childish behavior. Please continue. <laughs> so I needed a pen. What should I do? Should I raise my hand and ask you wait till I was done. I need to write. Why? Because you're talking. Exactly. She wants to document everything you said. All right. All right. Enough. You know, I'm going to call a vote if we I'm can't not handle this. I'm okay, not. please continue. And finish. I will be happy to finish if you will pay attention. Um, you know, the, the people that are sitting here with us in all these meetings are the staff. And there's a reason for that. Because what's going on here is not normal. So again, I would like to ask that we please slow these things down and talk about the things that you're mentioning because they've never been presented to us. We, I, I have no idea what your ideas are. You haven't shared them with us. You don't know what anyone else's ideas are either. We need to have a discussion about it before making the cuts before making the cuts, because if they're already made, we can't bring them back for a whole nother year. That's not smart. So I'd like to advocate to keep all current staff, fill vacant positions, and allow for professional development. I can't speak to what the intent of these cuts is. I can only interpret what is being put before me. What it seems like to me is that this board wants to push out qualified staff by increasing their health insurance costs, reducing their hours, overtasking them by not filling vacant positions and keeping them stagnant by not allowing for professional development. The staff is unionizing. They are giving a loud and clear statement. Here they are telling you right now, you should all be looking around you because that's who's in front of you. A loud and clear statement that they are not happy with how they are being treated. They advocated for Susan. They are advocating for themselves and this board is not listening. If we don't start listening, we will end up with a library that is barely open and unqualified workers. Library communities all over the country are watching what is going on here. We had a person from Rails here tonight. Maybe you didn't notice. She's gone. They know what is going on. Once we lose the staff, no library professional will ever come near this building again. 
What's happening here is not normal. Olivia, Suzanne, Joe, this is not normal. People don't rush in and change everything before knowing how things work. We should do our due diligence to the community by learning how a library operates thoroughly. A month on the board and an insider's tour of the building does not constitute an in-depth understanding of how to run a non-profit organization. That takes time and teamwork with people who are willing to speak and listen to each other. I also want to point out that letter I gave to everyone at the beginning of the meeting was from state representatives, legislators at the state level. I don't know how much clearer it has to be said that, you know what, maybe what is going on here isn't in the best interest of the community. I mean, we've got Jan Schakowsky telling us to step back and not do this. Who are you going to listen to if it's not them? I don't know. I do not approve this budget. Absolutely not. Okay, Margaret, please take the call. Hey, roll. I mean, please take a vote. Trustee Dublin? Yes. Trustee Anushet? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Nakula? Yes. No. Trustee Wazanski? Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Kina? No. This budget won't cover the union when they come in. No. Nope. Oh. They're coming. Go again. Oh, I'm sorry. Who will you listen to? You will not listen to anyone. They don't come back and fight now. Well, that's fine. Okay, you guys said that you were going to listen to the community. You will not listen. You do not listen to anyone but Carolyn and Joe. It's disgusting. Are you moving on? Uh, I'm assuming they're moving on. Yeah. Chief <laughs> Cheerleader just left. So, uh, oh, yeah. They can move on. Wow. Okay, the next item on the agenda, I believe, after switching around, is 11E. Move to approve, oh may I have a motion to approve the library continue to participate in the non-resident library card program and setting this fee, $353.02 formula based on taxes our resident card holders pay. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Olivia. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Do I go directly to a vote? No, I have discussion. May I just explain what this is in case people are not quite familiar with it? You're right. I it is, yeah, it's not necessarily intuitive. You know, there are pockets of unincorporated Maine Township that do not have any, that are not paying taxes to any library and have no library service. So this is um, to allow them to purchase a card from us at the same rate that they would be getting a card if they were paying taxes to the district. Now, they could, they could get a card from Glenview or... No, sir. No, they, no. They, they have to buy a card where right, whichever right. place they go. But they could buy that card from Glenview or from. It depends where they live. Or yeah. where they live. The people that are closer to Glenview are obviously going to be buying from Glenview, and most of them are. It's really we get only like one or two a year. This is not a significant thing. It's just a lot of people okay. that opportunity, and and uh, you know, in some places. Sometimes, every once in a while, a Chicago patron will decide that they like this library enough more that they will pay that fee to have access to our hotcakes and all the things that are reserved for residents. Cool. Thank you. I have a question. Um, what is the fee now? I believe it was two, it's 2 dollars right now. So this is only a couple of dollars difference. Right. Okay, cool. I have a question for being a person who worked for Maine 207. I know for a fact the local libraries that are affected or that feed 207 feeds into have agreements with the, the high school district as far as the fees for their students. Will this negatively affect that? Or no, this mess up no these, these have run side by side the whole time. So no, well, no change to any of that. Okay. This is something we approve every year. It's very routine. Okay. Do you hear that, Joe? 
I'm in favor of it. Yeah, that's a shocker. Thank you. Shall okay. we take a vote? Shall we take a vote? Are we ready for a vote? Yes. Please, Margaret, take the vote. Trustee Durbler? Yes. Trustee Hanushak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Nakula? Yes. Yes. Trustee Wazenski? Thank you. Trustee Lopez? Yes. Trustee Kinabs? Yes. Okay, just to be clear, we're, we're skipping F because we took care of that. That is the insurance. And now we are on G, which we took care of. Okay, now we're going to H. Move to approve YouTube streaming of the of Niles Main District Library board meetings. Um, I move to table up. I second. Because there's no description. I had one question, but if we're tabling it, is, I'll save it for the next time it's brought up. Okay, so the next item, do we have to vote on the table? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Jesse Dubuque? Yes. Jesse Milushek? Yes. Jesse Schoenfeld? Yes. Jesse Makula? Yes. Jesse? Yes. Thank you. This Just is the table, the YouTube stream? Yes, the yes. table. Yes, the 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 Yes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is 11I. Move to assign the responsibility to Sasha Basilic um, for maintaining specific norms and conduct for library participants in the July 4th parade. Well, yeah, I need a discussion in about where are you? Move. Is it been moved or No. Has it been anything? Do you have a question? I have a question on I. Okay, so I move it, so move. Someone needs to second. Need a second? Second. Okay. Um, Joe, do you, um, do you want to start with this one? I, I think we're, basically this uh, puts Sasha in charge of running the uh, upgrade. He always has. That's Public not Public relations. And yeah. He's responsible for yeah, no, I mean, he always has them under Greg's supervision, of course, and Mike is the director. But yeah, Sasha has always there, managed the parade. Is there a reason why it's on the agenda? Uh, Specifically. So that we have, you know, an orderly parade, we don't have people, you know, or signs or demonstrating. Just a minute. Okay. One I'm waiting. Could I'm talk. waiting. God forbid. I'm waiting. We have a, a clean image of the library. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I, I don't find it funny, but I'll be honest with you. There have been a lot of derogatory comments. There I been just a lot said I get a question. There was nothing derogatory about that, Caroline. You know, trustee, Rosinski, it is not always about you. Well, just like it's used to always be about you, Carol. Can I finish? Please do. The purpose of it, Sasha, I'll just talk directly to you instead of, the purpose The purpose of, of sort of highlighting that you are responsible is because there have been some incidents that have impacted the opinion of the library in a negative light. And oh. while everybody has freedoms and rights and what have you, we don't want the parade to be used for everyone else's personal agendas. So I know you, everyone wears it, you have everyone in the same shirts, it looks incredible, but what we're trying to say is it's not time for, for railing the troops to protest whatever your personal feelings are. It's to interact with the community as we always did in the past. There's just been too many situations and incidents recently that have negatively impacted the image of the library. I'm not saying people don't have a right to do and say what they want. The parade not, should not be used for that purpose. And we just wanted to, to bring it out in the public so that everyone's aware of the fact that we're, we're, we plan on maintaining an orderly and respectful parade, which we've always had in the past. Okay? Absolutely. Thank you.
And, and I just want to make that note, though, I have already notified the staff that that is a condition of participating in the parade. But I have also, you know, I also understand that they are entitled to wear AFSME things. There, that is protected speech, and they oh are, no, they're not concerned they about are allowed them. to do that. So I'm concerned about the outsiders. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, I did address it with them, so we're. That's wonderful. No, that has nothing to do with this. Excuse me, Carolyn. Sure. You said mention about outsiders. I just wanted to be clear that the only people that are marching are staff members or their family members. And even we have two dogs that are going to be in the parade with us. But I have zero control of the audience. I have zero control what people do before Notre Dame and when they get to Grenon Heights Park. So oh, no, please, pl hold, excuse me, please. Do not use anything of those against me. I have been running the parade for 13 years mm -hmm. without any, any issues. And I, I want, because we have a great relationship and you've been in the parade before that I would never, ever allow my name to be out there with a negative impact on this library. And, and, I, and that, wasn't, that wasn't what I meant. I understand, I just I felt actually, like I needed to I'm explain myself. I'm putting this on your shoulders because I am, a, I am concerned that people will infiltrate your group and make a mockery out of it. And I need someone to say that that's not, that's not what this group of library um, of, of participants are doing. Because with all the other things I've seen and heard, I just don't want them to sort of taint the image of the library during the parade. And I never expect, I, I always knew you would not allow it. I just, I'm concerned that, you know, you're going to be bombarded. I just, I hope not. But, um, just so that I mean, that's not I mean, my comment on bombarding, I am not the police. I am not, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that is definitely not in my job description to be fighting off people that will oh, be no, jumping into the parade with us or anything like that. Um, my job is literally just to organize it, to make sure everybody is in to make sure that the best image of the library is presented in right. the biggest event in the community. Everything else that's out of my control, I would like for that for sure not to be on my shoulders because I cannot control individuals that do not work at this library. But the people who come to participate in the parade, can anyone just walk in? No, so like I said uh, okay. earlier, it is staff so members, group, their family members, selected. and their pets. Okay. <laughs> no community, no one outside of this, I okay. mean besides family, but no community members, volunteers and such are invited to participate okay. with so us. It's a selective group, Correct. it's not anybody just pops in. Correct, I, yes, I, ha I have the list of everybody already, okay. you know what I mean? So I know exactly who will be there, who will be getting a shirt. And maybe the other reason to bring this up is to make sure whoever these people are, they realize that's not what the library is about. You know, if you have a position or a point, please make it somewhere else. Absolutely. All right, but thank you, thank you for that. And you always do an incredible job every year. Thank you. Right. Are there any comments? I just want to say, basically, we're giving them more authority. That's that's what this involves. To, to, you know. This is micromanaging. I gotta say. I mean, it is my job to manage my staff, and I have complete and total trust in Sasha to always represent the library beautifully. It actually did not require board input. Just for the record, it is again micromanaging. And it's not micromanaging because some things have come to my attention, which I wasn't aware of, didn't find out from the library staff that some things going on weren't to be going on. So, I mean, when the residents are calling me because of what's going on at this library, I mean, nonstop, yeah. my concern was to use this parade to do the same thing. That's why I'm bringing it up. It's not <laughs> micromanaging. It up to me, actually, but fine. Can I? Ask a question, Carol. If we could just go down the line, yeah, okay, down the line. Down the line. So my question has You're been done. answered. Thank you. We're done here. Okay, okay. Trustee uh, Nishek. Uh, just out of curiosity, are the staff that participate are they being paid or compensated in any way when they? Yes, absolutely. Pay? They are paid. In fact, it's a holiday, so they're paid time and a half to walk in the to walk in the parade. It's, a, it's for like an hour and a half or two hours. It's not a lot. Yeah. Okay. My question is, Joe and Carolyn, if you're so concerned about these situations, why don't you march? Well, are you? I'm marching. Good, because then maybe they will take some of the responsibility off of Sasha's shoulders. You know what? 
That's all I'm saying. You never cease to amaze me. Thank you. Yeah, I take that as a compliment. Trustee Olson, please. You know, that's a, that's a good idea. I've had that on my paper as well. Uh, you can march as well and, and tell people. I'll be oh, right there with you. Okay, good. And if anybody pops in, I mean, really, you have no control if anybody jumps out of the crowd and joins the. So, that's true. That's so, true. I mean, you, I can't believe that this is even on the agenda. It, it doesn't make any sense. And if you hear so many negative things, well, maybe you better start listening to what the residents are saying. You mean about the problems that about any you well your statement was you hear so many negative things you have residents calling you recently about. yes okay well maybe you better start listening that's why i made this comment okay. we can move on and not make it about me no well i don't know who put this on the agenda but whoever did and it's totally inappropriate because as you said and i agree sasha does a wonderful job As for staff walking in the parade and getting paid for it, I'm just wondering how many people besides staff are walking in the parade. If the staff wasn't walking in the parade, would we have enough of a presence to even be there? Probably not, unless all the trustees are there. So I think, again, yeah, like as many of us that as can be there, get the better, and that will definitely control more what goes on. And it would actually show the board in a positive way. Unfortunately, I already had a I'm going to be wearing the t-shirt, right, Charles Joe? But I guess that would be with a different group. So, yeah, but I agree this was a waste of time on the agenda. Excuse me, before um, you call a vote, I was wondering if the board might consider uh, withdrawing the motion altogether. Um, as, uh, as you heard, uh, Sasha does do a wonderful job and uh, keeps uh, everything control from, uh, from start to finish. There are certain things that he is uh, acutely uh, responsible for, and there are yet other things which happen outside of his control, which you know he should not be uh, bearing any responsibility for. Right. So you know, if I may, uh, just ask the board uh, to consider uh, withdrawing the motion altogether. I'd appreciate it. I so move to withdraw. Second. Well, that's not my decision. It wasn't my item, but um, we can certainly take a vote not to. Uh, so I guess there should be a motion. I don't know. I, 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 a motion I'm action. thinking the thing that would make sense, but again, not a parliamentarian, would be for whoever made the motion and the second to say whether they would accept withdrawing it. That's there you go. Okay. Makes sense. So we got that far already. I didn't even remember we got that. Yeah, I can't oh, remember either, honestly. We wouldn't be talking about it. Somebody I move, I move that, that we we'll withdraw the. Were you the item. movement? The movement, you were the movement? The yes. movement? Oh, good, thank you. Wonderful. And the seconder? Second. Thank you. Did I second? You, you did. Okay. Olivia moved it. And Susan yeah. seconded. Okay. Oh. Sorry, yeah. right. you both agreed to make the resolution? Susan? Yeah. Great, thank you. All right, we are now on I. Or J. Or J. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. Keep calling. Yeah, I know. It's me. Okay. These J's look like I. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to set the date for the public hearing concerning the tentative budget and appropriations ordinance 2102 for 2122? Um, I believe the date for the public hearing has already been set. Yeah, it's July 20th, 2021? Yes. Okay, just all right, so that's so clear. Like, so when is it set? July twenty. I need a second. Second. Okay. Right July before our right before our next week. July twenty. What day of the week is that? It's a Tuesday. And then the Wednesday is the board meeting. It's on a Tuesday and not on the Wednesday like Wednesday's our board meeting. Oh okay. so two nights in a row. Two nights in a row. I just incorrectly assumed it was like it normally is right before our meeting. 
Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, and it's at 6.30. Correct. Yeah. All right, um, I think we're ready for um, roll, um, a vote, Margaret. Okay. Trustee Dribblet? Yes. Trustee Hemushek? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Mikula? Yes. Trustee Wozanski? No. Trustee Olson? For this date, this time, yes. Yes? Yes. Ken Adams? Yes. Okay, before we go any further, I just want to check that we have covered every agenda item because we sort of jumped around. Susan, could you help me with that? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Because this 10, this 11 is a little. A and B are good. Where you got C and C? Yeah. Okay. D? Yes. And then the mess. Well, they did E, you did F, you did G. Table H. Okay. You did through I, and you just did J. So you're good. Oh, we did. We did. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other? Do you have your executive session? Yes. Oh, no, I, it was my fault that it got left off the agenda originally. No, actually, we're not having an executive session. Is there what you're planning with the Friday meeting for the Yeah, right. We have an executive session. Is that what the yeah, Friday meeting is? Friday. So once again, our meeting gets us at 6.30? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Is there any other? I mean, uh, is there a limit to the number of meetings? I did get the number. <laughs> You're reading the name. I just, I got to find out where I wrote it because I was writing stuff. I like move that we adjourn the meeting. Okay, fine. I will bring up my other at the next meeting then. Oh, Joe, she was speaking. Go ahead, Jane. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he didn't hear you. Did you have to? Yes, I did. So do you want to repeat it or are you? I would like to take it. Go right ahead, thank uh, you. I feel that it is very, it is not very transparent it's to receive documents from other board members without them going through the library. And in the future, if I receive such a document or anything on my private email and not through my library email where things are able to be seen, I will reject it. Thank you. Are, 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 you, are you speaking to someone in particular? I'm a little confused about the whole subject matter. The subject goes back to when Joe felt it was his right and obligation to write up stuff and drop it at our front doors. Oh, and okay. it wasn't transparent. It didn't go through the library. Just like you personally have stated, we should do library business through our private email. I all oh, please, dear God in heaven. Well, if we didn't have six meetings, maybe you would remember what you say at some of them. Mr. Rosansky, you should never use your private email. You had stated that on our first meeting where everybody I think it was Joe. Came I think, in. No, no, I think she was it she, he said it? Oh, okay. One you of you can I speak so we can get out Go of Go ahead, okay. speak. The question, the, the comment was that trustees could create a library email, not a personal email, other than using Outlook. It is not a personal email. And secondly, the documentation that Joe Makula dropped off was a documentation that Greg Prince and he worked on. He felt everybody should have had a copy. Maybe the communication wasn't the best, but if that's how you feel, he won't give you copies in the future. Well, if there no are copies that are not able to be seen by the public, he can keep them. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I second. Okay. 
yes, yes, thank you. Please take the roll, call the roll. Trustee Gerber? Yes. Trustee Hamishak? Yes. Trustee Shortcut? Yes. Trustee Nicola? Yes. Yes. Trustee Yes. Trustee Yes. 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 Yes